From the Smith Radio Studios, it's Carrie and Brian Smith. This is Smith Radio. You can tweet at Smith Radio, S M Y T H Radio. And now, your host, Carrie and Brian Smith. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Smith Radio. Your host, Brian Smith, then. Carrie Smith. Giving you all the late breaking news, wrapping it all up, making sense of it of the last week. I got it. Okay. That's my fault. That's my little button right here. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so this is Smith Radio, Military Veteran Talk Radio. If this is the first time you've been on the show, welcome, welcome, welcome. Crush the share, crush the like. We go live every Sunday evening, 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern. We give you the real no- news, exposing the fake news. We we uh, tell you about everything that they try to dump on you on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's where they like to hide the tidbits and, and the nuggets of information. We take all the news of last week. We wrap it all up, make sense of it all. And this week, just like any other week, has been busy. They've had the ups and had the downs. We're going to go over all that. Um, and as per usual, we will be not reporting probably in this show on a couple of major news uh, items. Because I'm, I'm sorry. There's just too much. There's just so much going on out there right now um, that uh, I can't get to everything. But we're going to try and get to a lot of the really big things that happened this week. Uh, and things that also interest us. Like, there might be something out there that you're really, really deep into. I'll be honest with you. We'll tell you I, like that this, we don't care. Like this thing <laughs> <laughs> like this thing with Q, guys, m- maybe Carrie does. I'm more I don't, involved I don't care. in that. I'm more, but you, you're right. It, it is. It matters. <laughs> it matters. But I can totally get why some people that aren't really into it think it does not matter. Right. I, I totally get that. Right. And so we'll get into some of those things a little bit. We'll touch on some of the stuff that Carrie likes to talk about as well. And um, we're live here on Vimeo.com slash Smith Radio or just go to the website SmithRadio.com. While you're there at the website, you can see everything we have on display, whether it be at Patreon.com slash Smith Radio. There's a Patreon button. And if you like iHeartRadio and you want to listen to us during the week, go to iHeartRadio. The button is at the top of the page. And um, I don't know. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Don't forget to become a Patreon Everywhere. patron. Yeah. Everywhere. Go to patreon.com slash smithradio. I've got two two calendars left. And I also found an extra Dinesh D'Souza movie. His last movie, America, Imagine a World Without Her. Oh, okay. For the, for the first three Patreons that jump on, the very next three Patreons, I'll either send you a calendar or the very first one I'll get you the DVD. And the next two, you'll get the calendar yeah, for sure. And if you're listening to this right now, if you hear this at any point, you're listening to me right now, whether it's a replay or whatever, just get on there and get on Patreon. I mean, the bottom line is this. We have a situation where too much money is going to fake news, and they're able to utilize that and leverage all that money that's going to them in order to fund more of their fake news operations. We do this at our expense. We do uh, have some very generous patrons on Patreon. If you add up what we're earning from them now, I think it just barely offsets our costs right now. What we would like to do is expand the operation to include some more um, professional equipment, some more equipment that will allow us to do things that we currently cannot do. Some of it, if you look at some of the more professional equipment, is quite expensive. But it would be really nice to be able to get. And for that reason, we would highly appreciate you uh, furthering the cause of real news. We're going to talk a lot about that, what it means to be listening to real news, to, to support it and to help fund it. And to get it going and how that is different from what we're fighting, which is just straight up fake news. And this week that happened, uh, Alex Jones completely unpersoned. Uh, unpersoned. 1980, 1984, the book. Uh, yeah. You know, they unpersoned him. He is no longer uh, on any social media platform. And, and even if he did, like, oh, Brian, just make another account. He's too big. Well, he was too big. Oh, no. They, I guess they should I it. talk about the Twitter what Twitter does, and I believe that all of them are probably tempting this. Twitter has perfected it, and uh, this is what we mean by unpersoning somebody. It is a digital execution where you are dead, you're gone, and 
all of the the uh, records of you ever existing are also gone. His 10 years of content, 10 years of content completely scrubbed from the net. Yeah, I mean, look at somebody like Amilo, who was one of the first ones banned in all this. Can you find – he was at Nero. Yeah. N-E-R-O. Can you find any tweets from Nero? No. It's gone. Oh, no. It's like it, it's like Nero never existed. And that's what they're doing. And this is what they're – this is how bad it is. I remember thinking to myself, you know, getting banned, that's a pretty harsh punishment because you could have tens of thousands of followers, maybe hundreds of thousands of followers. Right. And in the case of Alex Jones, maybe over a million, I believe. I don't even remember what it was. But, you know, you get back on. You start a different uh, account name and you start with a couple dozen followers and you just got to – Go from scratch from that point on. And I thought, wow, that's that is a pretty harsh punishment to get banned because then it's like you're starting all over. You got to rebuild that following again. And some of them will find you pretty quickly. Somebody like an Alex Jones would would uh, conjure up several thousand followers uh, very quickly. But it would take him a long time to get to all the way to where he was. Here's my point. Twitter has uh, and I would have never known this except for a couple of my friends who had been banned a long time ago that still continue to get onto Twitter. They have methods and algorithms that they that they utilize very aggressively to try to make sure that if you have ever been banned, that you never use Twitter again in any way, shape, or form. They try to identify users who had at some point under some other username had been banned. And when they identify you and can say, yep, that's the person – you're immediately banned without any explanation, without any warning. No recourse. You, just, you got no recourse. Right. You just wake up one morning and try to log in. And it'll say your account's been suspended, and they don't tell you why. But I'll, te- I'll tell you why. In, the ca- in those particular cases, it's because you're not allowed to be on Twitter once you're banned in any way, shape, or form. It's not the account that gets banned. It's you. You <laughs> get person. banned. You yeah. get unpersoned by Twitter and you're gone forever, and it's really sad. Uh, the uh, the two originators of Q have been banned so many times that they've all lost count. But every time the one uh, uh, Dreamcatcher has uh, he's probably on his thirteenth or fourteenth uh, uh, user on Twitter, and just yesterday he got banned. And well, you got to get a different VPN. You got to do all kinds done. of tech- technical things. And, and even so, that. he's still caught. He's still getting right. Uh, they're they're definitely using very sophisticated techniques to identify people who had previously been banned because this person, uh, Dreamcatcher, is um, you know this is the kind of person that uh, you know very uh, very uh, heavily uses four chan, eight chan, and is uh, very computer savvy. Very, very computer savvy. This is somebody you don't want to be messing around with. You want him on your good side. Yes, yes, on the good and side. And <laughs> that being said, he knows how to hide his tracks. He knows how to do the VPN. He knows how to make it so that he can't be identified or doxxed or whatever. And yet uh, all it did was buy him some time. And instead of getting banned in minutes or hours or days, he was able to survive – for several weeks and sometimes in a couple of cases several months before getting banned again. But, but his but his thing is that he's been uh, branded as Q, uh, a, a letter. Whereas Alex Jones is actually branded himself. Right. Yeah. So he if he were to try to get back on Twitter, he would never be able to identify himself as uh, Alex Jones. And as a matter of fact, the Dreamcatcher guy, he um, he's anonymous by nature. So by creating another account, he could easily make it un- untraceable to the other account. But Twitter, uh, with their, their extreme – the amount of work and labor and manpower that they put into making sure that when you're unpersoned, that it is permanent and that you right. are six feet in the ground and there is no bell that you can ring in that coffin. No, no, no. And they, just, they used to do that and save by the bell. Anyways, right. um, so Apple – and we talked about this too. Apple had uh, – had removed Alex Jones. What was it? Uh, the, the the Google removed all the videos. Apple removed his podcast on iTunes. However, and the app. However, the app was up all up until this week. Okay. So now he's completely removed from all Apple uh, the Apple platform. And there's only two places where you can have available apps to download, unless you have a, a direct link to a website, and that is 
Google Play, and the App Store. I mean, he could go to Spreaker.com and do an audio only, but it's, there's nothing out there unless you do your own website where we broadcast. If you paid Vimeo, like we pay Vimeo, and Vimeo then you, you broadcasts to our um, website also, but, but then you could broadcast, and that would be it. That, that would be it. There'd be, you know, he's got no Facebook link, no, no Periscope link, no. YouTube, so you could – your own website. Yeah. I don't just, know, I don't you know, know Gab.com or dot, uh, Gab.ai has been completely scrubbed from Google, right? Yeah. That's coming next for InfoWars. InfoWars.com uh, can be made Invisible. to disappear right. by – Making them unsearchable or anything, and on we're not. Google. This isn't. We're not. This isn't just. We're hyping things up, or we're making this up, or we're like pushing this. No, there was a Republican candidate running out in California, <clears throat> and when you Googled his name, Nazi and fascist and Hitler propaganda, that stuff propagated when you typed in this dude's name, and Google said, "Oh, my, my bad." Somebody playing around with the switches. Sorry. Hey, flip that switch in the, down. Well, you flip, d- it, flip it down. You used okay, to know. It, it works for him now. Don't worry. Or at least for now. <laughs> well, you used to mess around with that search engine optimization stuff. Oh, and so yeah. you, you know the inner workings of these search engines. It could be that the search engine just has a certain way of doing things that has nothing. So it's not the search engine that's doing it. But if bad actors were able to decode how the search engine works, you could easily create a an architecture that would make it so that when I type in Brian's name, nothing but Satan worshiping <laughs> websites will show up in the search right. results. You could you could game the system. It's not that hard. Yeah, so so it may not actually be Google. It may be Democrats saying, Watch this, we're gonna game the system. But here's the thing, they make it their job. Their job is to try to hide how the system works from people outside of Google so that you don't game the system. But if you were a employee at Google, which we know that Google is highly liberal. What was it, that, that guy, uh, Demo? De, uh, uh, there was a woman. No, the oh. guy that got fired for writing a manifesto that was just a truth bomb that was controversial. I think it was – Something demo or something like that. And uh, somebody in the comment section will have to uh, help us out on that. And he uh, he was fired. So he was proof of political bias at Google. It could very well be that somebody inside Google who is like the person that that um, the people that that don't like this guy that got him fired could leak how the system works to the Democrats or maybe to a super PAC like a Democrat super PAC. And boom, just like that, they can game the system so that it so that it comes back as all bad looking connections to somebody who's running as a Republican. So anyway. So so this wh- yeah, so this week Alex Jones is banned on everything unperson. Ben Garrison tweeted out and said Twitter censorship explodes before the twenty eighteen midterms. If you can't debate ideas, shut them down. What happened to free speech? Big left tech is now big brother, only good think allowed. A uh, good buddy of ours, a friend of ours that uh, is part of our, been part of the show for a long, long time, Sam Keels. Sam tweeted out, take note, InfoWars added millions of new independent votes to Trump. Jones single-handedly beat the vote grab, talk radio, so-called conservative media like Levin, Shapiro, Rush combined. In only one election year, let that sink in. And then Shadowed Spook, who's also a a fan of the show and part of the show for a long time, tweeted out, The monopolies afraid of Alex Jones continue to try and silence, shut him down. It is fear that shuts down opposing voice. And it's true. Think about that. This this guy was attempting to, to become another news outlet, a news organization. And... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm a big fan of Alex Jones. That's not what I'm saying. And I know he said some crazy things in the past. If you listen to our early shows, we used to he crack was on the it. butt on, of every single joke. <laughs> we started to take him seriously when DNC leaks came out of WikiLeaks. Right. He had been saying the very things that came out in the DNC leaks 
uh, for months. And we were just like, uh, that, that's a pretty crazy conspiracy theory. And it would be amazing. It's, it's, it rings so true, but it's Alex Jones and we've made so much fun of him for so long that, you know, who knows, uh, it's just wishful thinking. And then DNC leaks came out of WikiLeaks and we're like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, we've got to start taking Alex Jones a little bit more seriously. Now, that doesn't mean that some of the other things that he says – and it would actually be a logical fallacy to say that since we say that he was right about DNC leaks, that he must be right about contrails, about um, Sandy Hook and all this. I mean these these things are absolutely – you want to go ahead and mo- mute that. There you go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, every that's the thing about Apple. They do these quirky little things. They try to automate everything. I, Apple was I don't designed want that. for I don't idiots. Want that. No, no, it was designed for idiots. This is an idiot box because this is an Apple product, and also our computers, idiot boxes. Okay. And I think that uh, <laughs> Steve right, Jobs, <laughs> Steve Jobs, must have said, "You know what." I'm surrounded by a bunch of idiots. Let's just create boxes that'll entertain them. God rest his soul. Uh, the family, the the wife and the daughter. This week, actually, I, that you brought up, Steve Jobs, came out this week. It's sad, folks. Uh, I, we all know Steve Jobs was hardcore. I mean, he was really, really hardcore. Probably one of the worst bosses to ever work for. Oh gosh. Uh, he had to have everything absolute now, 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 and it had to be perfect. Had to be perfect. A lot of people really hated him. He had a lot of a lot of problems and issues and whatnot. He even in a tell-all book and in some interview, his daughter said that um, was talking about on his deathbed how you know he, he was so sorry about being mean to her so for so long and at one point in time denied it was even his daughter. Blah blah blah. Here's the thing: the wife even started talking about some of their intimate, personal, like. Things that he liked to do and stuff. I'm like, man, come on, man. I mean, I know the guy's dead and all, but it's like, it's your family. Why, why would you want that? It, does this bring you some kind of pleasure to talk about the misdeeds and the bad? I mean, the, the widow is now worth billions of dollars. So it's not like she's doing this for money, but I think people need to get a grip on reality sometimes. And, and some of these people that just... Maybe it's the attention. Maybe it's something that they need. But anyways, it's unfortunate that they came out with that this week. I tweeted out about that. and I was, I was beside myself with it. But something like that would never – I don't know. The person's dead. Move on. Let's go. So anyway, so uh, that with Alex Jones, it's unfortunate. But that's the way things are going nowadays. Donald Trump is promising to do something, to get, uh, get involved somehow. Um, we talked about Minds.com. Yeah, I like they came the interface. out last week. It's always seemed um, like a very beautiful interface to me. I, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure if uh, I hope that sounds right. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure who's going to win out. I just hope that the social media platforms that compete directly with Twitter isn't like VHS versus beta. No. Oh. Yeah. So we know Twitter's dead. There is no hope for Twitter. I'm looking. I'm at one point. Yahoo was the biggest, most wealth – or I shouldn't say wealthy, mo- most uh, valuable company on the internet at one point. They were – the shares were selling for like $212 or almost $220 a share. Oh, they were huge. They were the biggest of the big. Yeah, and uh, and they went down in flames. And if you know – very few people know the story behind the fall of Yahoo. Very few people – a lot of people chalk it up to, well, that was the dot-com bubble that burst. Well, actually, Yahoo was huge in 2001 and 2002. I mean it was the internet for, for all intents and purposes. Um, it, was, it was what was big after – when AOL started going down. <laughs> when everybody found out you didn't need to pay AOL. <laughs> well, I mean, you still need your interset, internet service provider. And, and um, Time Warner started offering cable. Here's what happened to AOL. Cable offered speeds that were so much faster for your internet that you started to be able to do things that you just could not do with dial-up. And so people didn't need AOL anymore. Yeah. And you're right. It, it, people started realizing that they didn't <laughs> you need AOL. You don't need AOL. to pay for it. And, and our generation was like the, the internet and everything on it is free. Right. We don't well, pay you, still, for... you still paid the cable company for the internet No, but service. when you were on the internet, 
that was freedom. There was right, you right. didn't. We refused to pay for anything. I, on the this net. is how old I am. I remember it being a revelation <laughs> that as soon as you turned on your computer, you were on the internet. You were in it. You were on the internet. <laughs> uh, it used to be you would have to turn your computer on, and, and once you were was on, you'd, you'd open up Netscape and then tell it to hook up to right. the internet, and it did it through your phone, uh, your your landline. And if anybody called or if somebody picked up the phone or oh, something, oh, it like shut you down. Yeah, you were you were off the internet. That was it. You were done, and you'd have to scream down to your mom to get off the phone. Oh no! You remember yes, this? Yes, yes. So that that's how the internet was back in the day. When cable came along, you were on the internet. Period. And if somebody used the phone, it didn't affect you at all. And it was so much faster. You could. Do you remember when when the internet was so f- slow that when you downloaded a large picture? This was getting on the internet. This was getting on the internet back in the day. <laughs> I bet some people are freaking out. <laughs> yeah, so that's getting on the internet back in the day. Oh, my goodness. And my whole thing, I told Carrie, I said, Carrie, as a programmer, why would they program this to allow us to hear that? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, maybe they were thinking that there are times where if it doesn't uh, make that sound, like there's a malfunction, if you didn't hear it, you would know immediately that something's wrong. Oh, so you mean like one of my my dad's first computers had an actual key lock? Like like the key that they use for the soda machines, the round key? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you could lock the computer physically from... Gosh, that reminds me of pay-per-view back in the 80s. It, had, it was a separate – there was a separate pay-per-view box. Yeah. And it had one of those little keys in it, and you had to turn it in order to allow for purchase of of, of – it could be – in my case, it was boxing matches. Right. Or you could also purchase like pay-per-view movies that HBO. were – HBO. Well, no, no. The HBO was actually a channel that you could – that was like a premium that you would pay extra for as a channel. Right. But they also – it used to be – do you remember this? This this is going to blow your guys' mind. We're going straight back. This is like throwback <laughs> Sunday or something. Do you remember movies used to come out at the theater and they did not come on HBO for 12 months? I was going to say for a year, wasn't yeah, it? Was it? Yeah, it was a whole year, 12 months. They would not – they would show at the theaters, and they'd be on the, in the theaters for several weeks. Sometimes it was a great movie. It would be quite a few weeks. Then when they stopped showing them in the theaters, you had no way of ever seeing it until it came on. It would be this big, great, huge premiere on HBO. It would be the first time it would come on. It would be like an 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. They would premiere this new movie that actually came out in the theaters a year prior. Well, check this out. When pay-per-view started allowing you to buy movies, you can get those six months. Right. So you would you could pay-per-view you it could six it. months. Right. Or you could wait till it comes on HBO in a year. Now, here's the thing about when I was mentioning HBO and the key. Our box had a key on it, and our parents could lock it, and we couldn't watch HBO. Right. We couldn't do anything like that. And they would hide the key. Now, and for uh, us, they would they would dare us. They would leave the key oh, dangling in the box. Oh, no. So my mom would hide the key, and uh, – yeah, Ma, we, we knew where you hid it. Oh, uh, <laughs> see, that's the thing. If you, we never said anything. If you hide the key from your pa- from your kids and they find it, as far as they're concerned, it's it's game on. Right. But if you leave the key in the box and say, "Don't you dare," then you just know. You just know. Uh, you know that makes sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So anyway, so folks, let's get back to uh, what's what's going on. Uh, Brandon from the hashtag walk away movement. It is really gaining a lot of traction. And there is going to be a big uh, march on D.C. And I wanted to put this out. I wanted to get the news out. Just give everybody a heads up. This is his uh, two-minute clip. This is his latest video where he's uh, uh, selling the notion and the idea of walking away and meeting up in D.C. to join the march on D.C. And, uh... Dear America, it's time. On May 26th of this year, I released a video explaining all of the reasons why I was walking away from liberalism and the Democratic Party. And I launched the walkaway campaign. 
By the thousands, patriots from all over America joined the campaign and created their own testimonials, explaining why they too were walking away or walking with. Americans from all different backgrounds, beliefs, and walks of life came together in unity, in support, and in patriotism. We found civility again. We reclaimed our common humanity. We rediscovered hope. I watched with immeasurable pride as Americans who had sat by silently for so long began to find their voice, to speak their truth, and to push back against hate with love. But then something began to happen. The liberal media tried to steal the voices of Americans once again. Russian propaganda, Russian bots, paid actors, fake people, fake pictures, fake testimonials. They've attacked you, lied about you, and they've tried to silence you. Well, it's time for the silent majority to become unsilent. I am officially announcing the walkaway march on Washington. On October 27th, one week before the midterm elections, Americans are coming together in our nation's capital to walk away from the Democratic Party. We are walking away from the lies, the hate, the violence, and vandalism. We are walking away from the vitriol, the name-calling, the censorship, the fake news. We are walking away from the phony and crooked investigations, the divisiveness, the race baiting. We are walking away from the attacks on our America. It is time to fight back with the greatest weapon at our disposal, the truth. It's time to take America back. We walked away alone, but now we march together. So March, the, the, the walk away, walkawaymarch.com, October 26th through the 20, was that 27th, 28th? I thought it said 28th. We got two days worth of marching. I, I like it. The timing's great. Yeah. It's right before, it's all about the midterm elections, right? The right. whole point of walk away is we're no longer going to vote for Democrats. No, no we're longer. We're going to start voting down the ticket, ours, all the way down. Because the Democrats just, they're not even civil anymore. They're like... A long time ago, Mike Cernovich said that they're 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 going feral, and it, <laughs> right. it certainly seems like that's the case. I mean, it, it was funny at the time, but it's gotten worse and worse to the point where they're not even behaving like civilized human beings anymore. And it's it's a little bit scary when you know that you're going to encounter them, or if you think you might encounter them, because it's like walking into uh, you know the cage of a wild animal at the zoo. You just you can't really trust what you're going to encounter. I mean, you could go out to a public place at a restaurant and get shouted down uh, in, in a very strange way. It's almost robotic. Like there's no humanity left when you can't have a civil discussion with somebody where you can't just say to somebody, you know, um, I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. I'm sure that your family thinks you're a nice person, but I really don't like your politics. I don't like what you believe in. I don't like the decisions you've made, and I don't like the the um, ideology that you're pushing. And just leave it at that and walk away. You have to just, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, uh, you know, if you have something to say to me, say it to me. You know, you don't have to act all crazy and just like not even act human. Right, and what, what was unhuman this week? Inhumane. Totally inhumane. This week was the uh, Judge uh, Judge Kavanaugh uh, hearings. Yeah, where he was up there. On, this is how it's supposed to go, folks. It, it, the Judge Kavanaugh was nominated by Donald Trump. Then he goes in front of you know at the hearings, and Congress uh, men and women and, and and these folks can ask questions, can talk to him, can bring up uh, past past. Uh, uh, papers that he's written and ideas and this is all about picking his brain apart and finding out who he really is and deciding on whether you want to vote for him or not well just like any other event uh, that the democrats in in recent years have done it has become a complete s show <laughs> sh show for real like okay. it was insane uh, the protesters showed up linda so sour the muslim uh she's a terrorist sympathizer terrorist Enabler, sympathizer, yeah. all the above Absolutely. Trying to convince women that the uh, religion of peace is Islam. Uh, yeah, she's a, a advocate for Sharia, which is so yeah. ironic because she acts like she's defending women. I'd, I'd love to just get her to explain the complete disconnect between being for Sharia law 
and being for women's rights and women's empowerment. It just does not make any sense. I must be missing something about the way Sharia law works. Yep, and uh, female uh, genital mutilation, part of Islam. and a- They can't wear what they want to wear, go where they want to go. I mean Sharia law kind of basically – forces them to be slaves to their man. Right. Or to the religion, uh, you know, just slaves in general. And in the UK, the uh, the FGM, female genitalia mutilation, has skyrocketed now that they have a Muslim mayor and huge Muslim influx of immigrants, or as some people like to call them part of the, the war movement. They're you know, yeah, sold foot soldiers. It could be you know. looked at that way. Yep. So uh, they, they took 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 to it right away, and as soon as the uh, mic opened up, and they, well, the mic didn't open up. As soon as uh, they started to open up the hearings, they give a little talk and they talk about what's going on, and everything. And Kamala Harris, the very hardcore, angry I mean, future presidential candidate, <laughs> <laughs> yes, future presidential candidate out of California, she is as crazy as the rest of I them. I can't believe that she would be a good pick for their nominee for the Democrat party it just blows my mind i mean it used to be that it's 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 a it's a deal breaker right well, well she p- toes the party line though i mean she, port- she supports the party she does what right. they say she follows the lies and uh, continues the propaganda so we had the kavanaugh hearing this week so if, for those of you guys living under a rock donald trump being the president that he is is required to fill vacant seats at in the supreme court This is per the U.S. Constitution, which, by the way, nobody's really made a very good argument as to Donald Trump's legitimacy as president, which means that his duties as president should not be called under question. Although there is a confirmation hearing that must take place in order for the SCOTUS picks of the president to go through and be official. And so uh, that's where we are today. We have a, a, a Republican majority of the Congress, so this kind of stuff would kind of almost be like uh, what theater. This is absolute theater. Not only that, but CNN is saying that the Democrats don't have a prayer. Yeah, in fact, the Democrats are saying that. Yeah, the Democrats are saying um, this is. <laughs> we is this really going to stop the nomination from becoming the Supreme Court justice? And you know, so Gorsuch went through, and Gorsuch is. Seemingly, so far as we can tell, very conservative, right? Uh, very uh, like he makes the kind of decisions that constitutional conservatives really like. I think you know you got your um, people like Mark Levin, who have been critical of Trump in the past, are just ecstatic about a Gorsuch pick. So now we have Kavanaugh, and it seems like these same conservative Republicans are all for that. So we are going in the correct direction. Correct correction for the the Supreme Court, which is also for our country, right? Because they will make proper choices when it comes down to um, making making uh, Supreme Court decisions. And so during this, we have a hearing that was this week. Yes, was it was it nice and was it something that you would show to the the children and how our uh, Judge Kavanaugh's was? children had to leave? Oh God, the first day and did not return. Oh, gosh. It was that violent, that angry Democrats coming out of the back door, screaming and yelling. Uh, 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 these these congress, the congressmen and women just talking over each other. It, it was like uh, it was Antifa. They, they, they picked up yeah. the, the Antifa page and said, this is what we do. Antifa has – I'm not saying that Antifa has taken over the Democrat Party – but I will say that um, the, the the handbook, the playbook, has definitely been adopted by all of the elected officials, even though they've been – a lot of them have been in their seats since before Antifa became a thing. Right. And the Democrat Party, it's kind of amazing that they just picked up on it like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do Antifa. Well, you remember the, the Peter Strzok hearing. You remember how Antifa that became. Oh, God, the screaming God. and the yelling yep. over top of each other. Uh, Louis Gomer, we played that last week, him asking a question and saying, you know, how many times did you look in your wife's eyes and lie to her? I mean, hey, hey, this is outrageous. You need to take your medication. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just what I don't have a problem with in the middle of uh, an outburst of everybody. Somebody screams something funny. I'm OK with that. I just have a problem with, um, you know. 
Brian Smith, you have the floor. And then as soon as you okay, start Okay, so I talking, have a quick question. I just wanted to ask if uh, – and while I'm, Now, why aren't you <laughs> answering the question? That was from before. And I don't have the floor. I'm out of order, and I'm just totally See, I'm just trying to him. ask a question, though. That's all I'm doing. But you doing. didn't answer the one but, before. Why aren't you answering his question? And it's just like, oh, my gosh. It's it's so out of order. They, they're going out of order on purpose. And out of order sounds – um, like uh, figure speech, but they, that literally means what it means in these hearings. There's an order of which you are to speak. If it's your turn to speak and you speak while it's your turn, you're in order. If somebody speaks over the top of you while it's your time, they're speaking out of order. And that's why they say, you know, you suspend my, can, you, can you stop my time? Can they stop yeah. my time while this guy bloviates? And then when he's done bloviating. And they won't do that. That's why they then bang the then gavel. Then restart my time. Yeah, they right. bang the gavel and say, you're out of order, you're out of order, you're out of order. So so here's Kamala Harris uh, ask, <laughs> asking a question to oh, Judge gosh. Kavanaugh. I'm going to ask you about unenumerated rights. Mm-hmm. So you gave a speech praising former Justice Rehnquist's dissent in Rhodes. been much discussion about that. And you wrote, quote, um, celebrating his success, that success in stemming the general tide of freewheeling judicial creation of unenumerated rights. That is what you said in celebration of Justice Rehnquist. So unenumerated rights is a phrase that lawyers use, but I want to make clear what we're talking about. It means rights that are protected by the Constitution, even if they're not specifically mentioned in the Constitution. Right. So they're not in that book that you carry. That's his constitutional pocketbook. That book that you carry? Wow. That's a slap in the face to every every patriotic American who loves our Constitution. So what we're talking about is the right to vote. That's an unenumerated right. The right to have children the right to control the upbringing of your children, the right to refuse medical care, the right to love the partner of your choice, the right to marry, and the right to have an abortion. Whoa. Wow. Okay. It's kind of amazing. She's talking about children, family, marriage, and aborting babies. Yeah. Okay. It's ridiculous. Now, putting those unenumerated rights in the context of the statement you made, which was to praise the stemming of the general tide of freewheeling creation of unenumerated rights, which means you were the interpretation there is you were praising the the the, the quest to end those unenumerated rights. My question to you is which of the rights that I just mentioned do you want to put an end to or roll back? Uh, three points, I believe, uh, Senator. First, the Constitution, uh, it is in the book (laughs) that I carry. The Constitution protects uh, unenumerated rights. That's what the Supreme Court has said. Yikes. So so he just just slapped her around a little bit there, made her look so foolish. Um, Kamala Harris, I just... That's the Democrat Party. That is your Democrat Party. And if Democratic, have, whatever you want, call it what you will. They have an unhealthy hatred for the Constitution. And yeah, that's no, a problem. Thoroughly, thoroughly uh, unhealthy hatred for the Constitution. So during the abortion uh, comments and the eruption of people in the s- streets and getting into the uh, into, into the chambers. Uh-huh. Apparently, there was a crew of individuals, men and women, uh, dressed up like Antifa, uh, crazed, insane people mm-hmm. that have dumped red Kool-Aid or red, red, some kind it of red. It's redder than Kool-Aid. It looks like it could be, it could be real blood or it could just be really dark. Or maybe pink. animal, animal blood. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, uh, like pig blood or something yeah. like that. So for the, those of you on video, I'm going to flash it real quick. <laughs> this is what happened. This is what the Democrats did. And for those of you on audio only, I will describe it slightly. They put the, they put blood looking material on their crotch, like like spilled it all over their crotch area, and attempt with I guess white shorts and attempted to disrupt this thing as if Judge Kavanaugh single handedly has the ability. To uh, when this is what they're saying that be, Kavanaugh will equal murder in the streets of women, uh, the bodies you know, not it's controlled by women. We we talked uh, several weeks in a row now about that 
uh, that uh, Scott Adams scope where he talks about how the facts don't matter as much as if you can move the needle. Right. And um, he his argument was you can use hyperbole, which is not necessarily exactly true, and it certainly would be it would be wrong to construe hyperbole as fact. It's more like a an opinion that's been conflated into something bigger than it is. And he argued that if that moves the needle in the right direction, that that's preferable. And it's what's been working for Trump, which I don't I don't 100 percent agree with uh, with what he was saying about Trump. But this is an example of where hyperbole and falsehoods are not, if anything, are going to move the needle the other way because it's so blatantly, obviously false. You know, when you talk about how uh, having Kavanaugh be one of the nine justices on the Supreme Court is going to cause women to just start dropping dead in droves somehow, some way. Yeah, because they, apparently they're going to start their own self-abortions. I, I don't get that. I, I, oh, they're going to use the coat hanger back alley, that kind of stuff. You know, I did I did some research on the coat hanger thing. Yeah. And not that it's a myth, but it's probably the most rare of rare. And while being legal, after Roe v. Wade, you would think, okay, 1973, nobody used a coat hanger anymore, right, Kerry? Well, you would think because that there that's would be what they less were complaining. of a need. Well, but that's what they were complaining about. That yeah, that if without it being legal, you're just going to force women into back alleys, uh, back, back alley abortions. You know, it actually still happens to this day. Back alley abortions uh, and coat hangers. So they didn't really stop it. It would be like legalizing uh, marijuana. Okay. Yet people will still buy it from their friend that grows it, and not buy it from the store. Okay. I could I could see that I could uh, if they do legalize pot there will be growing at home and there will be selling it person to person and and of course that will have been made totally illegal and you'll probably spend many years in prison for doing that kind of stuff even I mean, though you could buy it down the street in a pack of uh, like twenty cigarettes or whatever you know and when when alcohol became legal uh, and people still being arrested for moonshine running moonshine true they, to this day they had a whole show on the uh, Discovery Channel about they did did they? yeah <laughs> running shine dude that guy was funny I liked that show <laughs> I only saw it like once so I don't, I don't know, know how they could have pulled that off because they showed his picture and they. They followed him and his his goofy sidekick that was always drunk. Oh. Like he had the drunk eyes. He was so drunk. You know, I'm thinking of the moon shining, and I'm thinking about something that what I do what I do remember of it as a child, and then I realized that Burt Reynolds died this week. He sure did. God rest yeah, his soul. Because I was Smoking thinking the Bandit. Yeah, Smoking the Bandit. The plot. I never understood the plot, even in adulthood. I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Wait, let me get this straight. Yes, it it is so, that bad. It's that dumb. shining alcohol. What are we talking about here? We, we're talking about legal <laughs> we're alcohol. We're talking him. about Coors. Coors I'm in beer. a high speed pursuit. <laughs> we're talking about Coors beer. Yeah, shipping it from the Colorado Rockies uh-huh. across the Mississippi uh-huh. to to Florida, or wherever they were going for the it, rich. Yeah. The rich, rich guy wanted right. all this beer in Florida, right? And whatever it cost, I want you to get there. So it was illegal at some point in time. There's a law. It was illegal to ship Coors beer <laughs> east of the Mississippi and 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 it, west of the south of the Mason Dixon. It caused a major high speed pursuit across the entire country. Right, right. So I had trouble <laughs> understanding it, but it turns out. That these laws actually do exist. And it proves your point that just because you legalize alcohol or legalize marijuana or legalize abortions or whatever doesn't mean you're going to stop the back alley abortions, the uh, selling of pot to your friends, and the uh, smoking the bandit movies. <laughs> it ain't going to stop it. That is a hell of a loop we just did. Yeah. So, anyways, let's get on to uh, Booker, uh, Cory Booker. Cory Booker is another one. Oh, boy. He's running for. Uh, Something. Yeah. I don't know if he's – he'll be running for president. These are all <laughs> these are all folks on the left. This is their moment of fame. And every time the camera is on, they believe that this is the way to get attention, to rile their base up, and to rile up support. Wow. How's your, how's your seat doing? I'm, the, the thing's uh, 
let now it keeps going oh down. it's going down <laughs> yeah. oh man you want me to adjust the camera up there so that's all right okay okay so here's cory booker and this is his moment this is an incredible moment oh, he's a junior senator from new jersey right so so this is his moment to shine and shine because well, he's a junior senator he's got to get up to senior he's got to get noticed right and and the higher he goes the more likelihood he could run because they're following barack hussein obama's footsteps right his was simple it was like hey let's just give get him in the senate we'll jam him into some place so how do we get, get him in the senate well, there is a guy that has a it's Senate. Got to be Chicago. Yeah, this guy <laughs> has a Senate seat right now out of Chicago, mm-hmm. and he's as dirty as the day is long. Okay, he's an incumbent. But, but oh, sorry about that. We can go ahead and we can shame him very easily. It won't be hard. Okay. We'll, we got lots of dirt on him. We'll shame him. He'll step down okay. and announce he's not running again, and Barack Obama will take the seat. And that's exactly how that went down. Uh, a little bit easier than how Hillary Clinton's went down by uh, offing JFK and blowing up his airplane. That happened. Well, I don't know I who mean, did it. Yeah, we talked about that. That was interesting last week. So here's Cory. No, uh, uh, here's Cory Booker. We are holding back. Not only, not only holding. So this is the DC caller putting together a montage for you with uh, Cory Booker. Back okay. documents labeling committee confidential, and I'm releasing it. To expose that, number one, the emails are being withheld from the public have nothing to do with national security. Shame on my colleagues if they conceal them now. I understand that that the penalty comes with potential ousting from the Senate. I'm releasing committee confidential documents. Mr. Mr. Chairman, here's the interesting piece of that. That email, those emails, had already been cleared for release by the committee. (laughs) No other documents that were supposedly quote unquote, committee confidential, were released by Democrats Thursday morning. But it turns out, as I understand it, they were actually pre-cleared for public release. This is about the closest I'll probably ever have in my life to an I am Spartacus moment. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! The senators, at least, were leading people to believe that they were releasing this against the will of the Republicans. What was then revealed was that, in fact, Republicans had looked at all these documents and prepared to release them, and they were eventually released. The information that he was talking about had actually already been made publicly available. Late Wednesday night, GOP Senator Mike Lee vowed to work with Booker to get the documents released, even walking across the room to shake on it. Just after 11 a.m. this morning, Booker released four documents via email and Twitter and said this about Cornyn. I think he was just like most bullies are, a lot of talk and no action. Wondering if the documents were actually those Lee had worked with Booker to release. If you don't care about classified information read in front of the entire nation and the rules don't matter to you, even when you can't even violate those rules the right way, <laughs> out of a, a stunning num- amount of incompetence. That is irresponsible and outrageous, and I hope that the senator will reconsider his decision because no senator deserves to sit on this committee or serve in the Senate, in my view, if they decide to be a law unto themselves and willingly flout the rules of the Senate and the determination of confidentiality and classification. That is irresponsible and conduct unbecoming a senator. A short time later, Senate Judiciary Committee staffers told reporters that the documents in question had indeed been cleared by 4 a.m. and that Senators Blumenthal, Booker, Coons, and Leahy had been notified shortly thereafter. Mr. Kavanaugh has been on the circuit court for 12 years. Uh, He has a voluminous record, uh, 307 opinions uh, that he's written. I don't know, that's 10 or 15,000 pages of uh, writings that he's done. Is the best uh, uh, record uh, that other people have said, so I'm going to agree with them. It's the best way of knowing whether or not they should be on the Supreme Court. So there you go by the D.C. caller. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. Appreciate that. And it is just shocking, shocking how, I mean, they're stupid Democrats. I mean, they're getting. So walk me through this real quick. So prior to the hearing, he shook hands that this was going to be released. That tells okay. me okay. that well, tells me that he set up his I am Spartacus moment himself. This yes. was not spontaneous. This, this was, was like, planned. Yes. I want to make sure I don't get in trouble for doing this. So can we go ahead and declassify this now? OK, so he does that. And then the next day he goes up and he's like, I am letting this information out. I'm releasing it to the public. I don't care. Be 
damned if I if I'm arrested and thrown in jail or to depose or kicked out of the the Senate. I could care less because I am Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> when in oh all reality, gosh. the documents were already released. Yeah, they were already out. He made sure that that <laughs> happened, so he's yeah. in trouble. He's such a soy boy. <laughs> like, uh, th- oh, he, that's gonna hurt him politically. It's, it's no it's balls, <laughs> no balls whatsoever. Oh my gosh! Well, that not is, only well, that's gonna definitely hurt him with independence. See, folks, we're fighting for independence, if you will, for people who uh, are not calling themselves Republicans or Democrats, for those that are. Open minded and are, 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 they'll look at e- either candidate either way. And it is a clear cut choice. It could not be more clear that the Democrats, all their tactics, all their lies, all their cheats, all their tactics are completely exposed. Social media, the, the, the internet technology has made it so that you would literally have to be, um, you would have to be David Copperfield. <laughs> you would have to be David Copperfield to be able to pull off uh, shenanigans that they can't pull off. And, right. and they're not. And since they're not David Copperfield, they're we're no all co- just like, I see what you did with the tiger right there. <laughs> yes. I see it. I saw the curtain go down. Right. You're not fooling anybody here. I saw we're, the, the we're trap. All hecklers. The, the trap door fell yes. down the bottom. We, we saw, saw him it. climb out. Yes, we saw everything. <laughs> Um, we're all hecklers now. Yes. A majority of us are not even hardly interested because we can't even be hecklers because we're all looking at each other like, you saw that, right? Yes, yes I, saw I saw that. It's just bad magic. <laughs> it's bad performance. <laughs> it is. It's like you're watching a really bad – you know what it is? It's a really bad ma- magician who's trying to do the hardest tricks. Like <laughs> – you're not going to pull this off, dude. You, you No, that's not going to happen. Just stop. Oh, man. Stick with the cards. Oh, Stick man. Stick with something easy. Go some, you know, stay in your lane, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. I just can't take it anymore. Yes. So we've got uh, um, uh, Senator Mike Rounds. He's out of, I, I believe, North Dakota. Senator Mike Rounds is a 30-second clip. On uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And the reason why we're doing this is because I want you guys to be well informed of who Judge Kavanaugh is. And I want you to be excited as we are about Judge Kavanaugh, about his constitutional, how he he holds dear the Constitution. And whether it's his personal opinion that that Roe v. Wade be overturned, he's going to go to the Constitution and and do his job the way the Founding Fathers would have wanted him to do. Which is amazing because the story we heard about the Kavanaugh pick and this is this is insider information here and I'm sure it's old news but it's insider information from back when Kavanaugh was picked was that it was actually his second choice because the negotiation between Trump and McConnell was if you want us to to confirm somebody before the 2018 election it's got to be Kavanaugh's the only he, one we'll the only one will get done yeah, yeah. uh the, Kavanaugh's the only one from your list so he gave him a short list, and he said, "Kevin, if you want him now, if you want your per- first pick, which was the, the woman, and I can't remember her name, but she'll probably be in there eventually. Right. Um, if you want your first pick, it ain't happening before the election. So Trump decided, well, I'll compromise. I'll take Kavanaugh, and here we are. We're going to have him confirmed before the election. Oh so- yeah, Mitch McConnell said the end of September. Okay, the end of we're doing it into September. And this is who now? This is uh, uh, Senator Mike Rounds from okay. North Dakota. Judge Kavanaugh is probably one of the most highly qualified nominees to ever be brought before the United States Senate for confirmation to the United States Supreme Court. He's done over 300 decisions that individual senators have been able to look at, and he will interpret the laws based on what he believes the constitutional directs. He's one of these guys who, even if he thinks a law should be changed, he will interpret the law. He's not going to try to make it what he thinks it should be. That's the mark of a good Supreme Court justice. You awesome. Mean, you mean not one that redefines uh, the word uh, marriage and makes it into something that is was never defined as that being that? Well, and they're saying that Roberts added his own interpretation to a law written in order to save Obamacare. Oh, yeah, the, so the tax. Bad. It's a tax, so it's got to be legal. Yeah, it's a tax. It's, it's just bad. He added added his own words to it, which is not good. That's called legislating from the bench. 
And so so that's obviously a bad thing. But also the thing about Kavanaugh, there's people – this was er, in the early going, early in the week. There were people concerned that Kavanaugh had written personal emails that contradicted what he says he, – how he says he would rule. And I think that that is a mistake to go down that road, and I'll tell you why. For him to make decisions that are in contrast to what he has said his personal preferences are in private actually exposes how good of a judge he is because it shows that he'll make um, certain judgments despite what his personal feelings are. Right. So that's actually a good sign. So I think that, that if you hear that, if you're, oh, he's got these contradicting emails. No, that actually proves that he would be a a better judge than most. Governor of Arizona has tapped former Senator uh, John Kyle, who uh, was a friend of John McCain's and uh, apparently is a friend of the family's. However, I know, however, John Kyle, a much much more stable, really, much more conservative, a wow. much better man uh, than John McCain. Uh, he would have, uh, people are speculating, he would have thumbs up to get rid of Obamacare. Uh, he doesn't have a personal bone to pick with Trump, as we know of yeah. yet. And they're saying that for Kavanaugh, he would be a thumbs up. Okay. Awesome. So, I, I mean, I was nervous at first when I heard all those things about how close friends he was with John McCain well, and the family. when Mitch McConnell but, says that we're going to get him through before the elections if you pick the person that I would want you to pick, which is Kavanaugh, I think that Mitch McConnell is going to go around and make sure that these people are on board with with going along with the Kavanaugh picks, which right. is why this is a no-brainer. He's going to be confirmed. Uh, the, they're, they're, the Democrats are expending – an enormous amount of political capital to turn this into a spectacle. I mean, they have no chance of winning, and whatever message they're trying to get across is actually hurting them. It, it ain't working. No, yeah, it ain't working at all. Them. So Char- Charlie Kirk, at Charlie Kirk 11, uh, the playbook of the left. Call your opponent racist, misogynist, bigot at the outset of any argument. Refuse to debate ideas because they are inherently racist. Claim to be on the side of tolerance, acceptance, and understanding. Riot anytime you lose. What is this? The playbook? Yeah, this is the playbook of the Demo- of the left, the Democrat Party, and uh, Donald. Uh, no, that's uh, we were. Yeah, we did the Kamala Harris, Booker Washington, and at Veranda Menta, Cory Booker. This is a joke. Cory Booker goes into this is a joke. Cory Booker goes into the Olive Garden and has a seat. The waiter approaches Cory Booker and Cory Booker and lays down the breadsticks in front of him. And Cory Booker says, "I'm not paying for these breadsticks." And the waiter responds, "Sir, this is the Olive Garden. Breadsticks are complimentary." Cory Booker responds, "I said I'm not paying for these breadsticks." <laughs> Yeah, this. <laughs> there were so many jokes. That's one of dozens of jokes about the um, declassification of documents that would have been against the rules of the Senate. And it was just a big joke because they were already declassified, just as the breadsticks are already free. <laughs> It was a lot of that. It was amazing. It was hilarious. So, so, and I know some folks who work, uh, used to work at the Olive Garden and also used to work at um, Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, Outback? Yeah, Outback. Do not ask if the, uh, if the breadsticks or the bread is free. Don't do it. It's not a very nice thing to do. I'm just saying. Uh, usually, they- Are they free? It's just a little bit. Friends that get triggered by it, though. Yeah. You want to trigger your friends. So we've got uh, Gateway Pundit, Jim Hoff, who uh, did some, uh, got a hold of some pictures, got a hold of some things. And apparently, people at the Kavanaugh hearing were being paid cash outside on the spot to cause a ruckus on the inside. Literally, I mean, there's pictures of people being paid cash 
this woman. I wonder how much. Uh, I may have gone and done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! no we're, gonna, we're not gonna go we'll down, go that, down that road again. We're not doing that again. Uh, you know, I would have, I would have made it work against him though, because I would have came out and went straight in front of an, uh, a, 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 a journalist to give an interview. I would have told him, "Hey, I don't know what's going on in but there. I, but got, I, I got a, paid. I got paid. I got paid. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you do it." So, for those of you on video, here's a picture <laughs> of the woman. She's got a really funky looking dress on, which is unmistakable in her body shape. Unmistakable. Oh, her profile from behind is almost. Look at her ear and her face and and the glasses. I mean, it's her. It is an identical picture from side by side. So, the picture of her outside. Signing up with what looks like to, uh, to be a guy that's signing her up and paying her cash. And then she goes into the Kavanaugh hearings and disrupts and is arrested. And I promise you this, being arrested was probably part of, or at least being kicked out. You had to at least do that. was part mm-hmm. of being paid. We also have... Uh, <laughs> Oh, geez. Some of the other ones that were being paid. And then I, we talked about the uh, the vile uh, blood throwing on, on, on the, some of the people that were showing up. And so that by the gatewaypundit.com, if you don't follow that or if you don't visit that website, you absolutely should for great, great news. I It's very hard to ever find Jim Hoff wrong. I was shocked and amazed at some of the articles that he put out during the election that I was almost in disbelief of, but his connections are so well and so good that he puts these articles out with confidence and he does a great job. Uh, not only that, but we like the guy. We know him. We know yeah. Jimmy. Oh, oh Jimmy. Was, I think he had a big part in the, um, uh, the, the new media gala. Yes. I think he may have even organized that because we had a conversation with him about that. I was trying to tell him that when you do – first of all, it should be annual, which I don't think they had one this no. year. But if they did it annually, they should have – they should make a spectacle out of it with including awards because these awards end up being the 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 thing that, that adds cr- uh, cr- credentials to your website, to your blog or to whatever media outlet you're doing. I think that every single person that showed up should have got some sort of – uh, a, an participation award. award. Well, what I'm saying is, is that <laughs> for, I mean, there were people there that I thought were just there because they were starstruck on who was going to show up. Well, some of the folks that we met, we yeah. we realized that they were they doing were what we, they were doing. Well, they yeah, they were doing. Some of them were huge. Some well, like uh, Brian, I think it's Brian Rich from uh, Cleveland on YouTube. Yeah, and he, okay. he's he's the one that said we do nothing but YouTube, and I, and we were like, well, we do nothing but audio. At the time, I think we didn't go, right. we didn't start going video yet. And we were going to exchange information. Somehow we never hooked up since then. But then we saw this little kid walking around and we were like, who's this little run? Oh, he's probably going to be starstruck once he meets us. <laughs> and so he was very gracious and really cool. And um, He's like, yeah, I got like a million followers. No, no, he didn't say anything. He was just totally oh, cool. Did and, you look him up? Yeah, I looked. <laughs> he, he was like, yeah, um, yeah, here's my number and everything. We exchange information. And I go and look him up. He's got a quarter of a million subscribers on YouTube. And I'm just like. Oh, man, this guy has got some big right. numbers. Big and numbers. some great videos. But anyway, so when it comes down to it, here's the numbers, folks. When it comes down to it, for Judge Kavanaugh, 46 already have said yes. 44 have already said no. That leaves what? Nine undecided. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. The Democrats that are already saying no, that are demanding more documents, are just stalling. They've, they're already in no vote. Right. Uh, not only that, but the amount of documents that have been handed over. Is it over 100,000 documents? I was going to say, so if somebody's have been, a Democrat and they've got hundreds of thousands of documents, are they trying to say that, you know, I'm just kind of inconclusive right now. If I could just have a couple more documents, well, it, could, saying, it could push me over the edge. I may actually be a they're yes They're claiming vote. that they don't have enough time to read all of them. <laughs> that may be actually true. Uh, that's a valid argument. Well, but, but they, they asked for the amount of documents they've asked for and received is that of the last half dozen judges that have been confirmed already. It is just unacceptable what the, the way that they're going about this. Well, what if they 
they could make the argument that, well, the only reason we got this many is because you're trying to hide something. Yeah, right. You're trying to well, well, muddy cla- the water. They're claiming that Kavanaugh is going to get Trump out of Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, I think facts get him out of Russia, <laughs> Russia, Russia. I um, think that, yeah, the facts will get reality, him out. Reality, yes. you know, something like that. Um, yeah, they just – how about how about – the investigation turning up no collusion whatsoever. Before I forget, I, I, we're not going to talk about that, but before I forget, this was breaking news this week, and uh, Joe DeGeneva uh, like spilled it, announced it, ex- accident- well, not accidentally, but just threw it out there. Rod Rosenstein uh, has a problem with the FISA court system, and he's not allowed to actually have anything to do with that because he's under indictment. Rod Rosenstein, the one running the Department of Justice, is under indictment, according to Joe DeGeneva. This is great, phenomenal news because they're going to find all kinds of dirt on this guy. Anyway, with that being said, sorry about that. I just had to get that out. But, yes, all this stuff that's going on and the Democrats, they're screaming, they're putting up the, the whole thing that went down with Peter Strzok, the whole thing that went down with this hearing, every one of these hearings in public. They make a spectacle. The screaming, the yelling, the gnashing of teeth. This is not how you win elections. Hmm. And, I, and I'm not giving them advice. You know, they love to give us advice on how to win. I'm not giving them advice. You, you keep it up, guys. Keep it right up. And um, what was the other thing? This Oh, uh, Kavanaugh. And then we can slip into the Bob Woodward book. If you will, real quick, and I'll open Bob Woodward, Woodward and Bernstein all the way back to Nixon. Apparently, Woodward is a hardcore leftist, apparently uh, part of the coup, if you will, or joining the the late part of the coup. Uh, writing a book about Trump uh, claims he contacted Kellyanne Conway, but she didn't give him the information. And during the audio interview, you can find online Trump. Kellyanne Conway walks in the room while Trump's on the phone with Woodward, and you can hear Trump look at Kelly. He said, Kelly, hey, did he call you and say for an interview? Ah, oh, I want to talk to the guy. Come on, oh, that's unfortunate, Woodward. I want to talk to you. I mean, when we've known each other for years. I'd have talked to you, but since you didn't, you know, you didn't come at me. They said some other things. Then the conversation went sour, and Donald Trump was like, well, this is going to be another fake, fake, uh, Fake hit piece again, then, huh? There's be another fake hit piece. Come to find out, yeah. Woodward's book, another fake hit piece. And Mark Dice did a video where he combined both Kavanaugh and Woodward together. So I kind of felt like we could uh, go back to back with that as well and, and bridge these two real quick with the video of Mark Dice, which was really good. Mark Dice is under fire too, folks. I'm shocked that he's lasted this long. He's got uh, over, over a million, over a million subscribers. Right. I'm shocked that he lasted this long, um, especially since I, I'm sure he's massively demonetized. Oh yeah, he says he says, look, at almost every other video is at the very end. He'll say, see, the last video I talked about CNN, and it says demonetized because not um, advertiser friendly <laughs> content, right? Right. So, and we were getting all that all the time. We we're getting that all the time. So he's he's getting hit pretty hard. But uh, this is uh, Mark Dice going ahead. <laughs> the Democrats' latest hope for impeachment hinges on another new book. This one by Bob Woodward, who will bring down Richard Nixon. Tell us, Lemonhead, what sort of damning evidence has he uncovered? Well, tonight, the White House hitting back at Bob Woodward after his explosive new book portrays the White House in complete chaos. Woodward quotes staffers reportedly calling the president an idiot, an effing moron, and saying that he is the understanding of a sixth grader. He just loved saying that. Did you hear I, he said he's, he's quoting the Woodward book, but did you see how much he just loved to say that? This is the biased <laughs> journalist at uh, Don Lemonhead at CNN. So the people who work with the president have supposedly called him some names, and the president has also supposedly called some people some names. Whoa, it looks like impeachment's right around the corner. Oh, wait, what's this? Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis calls Bob Woodward's book fiction and a product of someone's rich imagination. (laughs) But there's got to be something more to this book, right, Lemonhead? And what's been released so far from the book shows that 
the, the president's inner circle, those in there, they're worried that he is in a, a danger. He is a danger to national security. Wait a minute. I think somebody already came out with this book last month. It was called Unhinged, an insider's account to the Trump White House by that angry black woman. You know, I totally forgot about her. Wow. <laughs> the difference a month makes. Tell us how much all these fake scandals have affected the president's approval rating, little Katie Turr. 88% of Republicans still support him. 88%. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I just I, I start to wonder when we have these conversations and we say, well, this is going to be the breaking point. I, I wonder if there is a breaking point. I wonder if. No, no, there may not be. If he keeps up this great of a job, we're going to be supporting him through 2024. <laughs> Here's Bob Woodward's old sidekick from his Watergate days, Carl Bernstein, talking about the significance of this new book. If this is not a warning sign going off to the Congress of the United States, to the Republicans of the Congress of the United States, saying, first of all, we must protect Mueller's investigation. Secondly, we cannot blindly follow this president and his incompetency, which is a theme throughout this book, and his recklessness and his disconcern for the national interest uh, in favor of his own interest. How? It is time for the Republicans to say... The Trump presidency is a national emergency, and Why? it is up to us, both parties, to treat the Trump presidency as a national emergency. <laughs> we, we're just getting at the surface. It's a <laughs> he, what is he? He's I, just he's just talking in talking points and platitudes. There's just there's no he's not really he's just saying what he wants to be true, but can't substantiate it with any kind of you know evidence of any kind. He just says it's a national emergency and and that uh, he's doing things for himself, not for the national interest. What? What are you talking about? His own special. It's his own he, special interest, Carrie. If he was really concerned about himself and not the country, he would have been much better off, thousands of times better off, just continuing to go down the road of being a business owner, a very successful business owner. Right. He gave it up. He gave it all up. At, at a at a huge, a huge disadvantage to himself monetarily, and also this could be something that, if, if the Democrats win, the way they want to, uh, if they want, if they if they win, and they want things to go down the way they they want it to. This will be a stain on his family legacy for eternity. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, three four generations down the line. His uh, his uh, family will be paying dearly for it. So he this is what he's risking and what he's sacrificing to make America great again. And by the way, it's working. If it wasn't working, I, I'd be really worried about people who believe that. I, I would worry that they might be right. But the fact that he is, in fact, making America great again by by renegotiating on our behalf for better deals for America – for doing uh, implementing policies that cause us to have um, uh, job growth, wealth growth, everything is just doing better in America. Anybody who's got any money in their four hundred one k is seeing a huge return. Oh yeah, like that's they've just never seen before. that's just the rich getting richer, Brian. No, that's no, we rich... played a video of a blue collared worker shocking CNN. They voted about, Obama both about times. About people that don't have a four hundred one k though, huh? About them. They can get a job they now. They can get a job. Like, good job. And, and actually, you know, have some dignity. Step it up. Right. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So here's more dice. National treasure. Not an emergency, you lunatic. What is a national emergency? It's the liberal pathogen that has infected almost half of the country, which I detail in my new book, which is coming out in November. And I'll tell you more about it in the coming weeks. We saw some of this yesterday at the confirmation hearing for Brett Kavanaugh, who will be the next Supreme Court justice, when just seconds into the chairman's opening statements, Democrats did this. Good morning. I welcome everyone to this confirmation hearing on the nomination of Mr. Judge chairman. Brett Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman. To serve as associate justice. Mr. Chairman, I'd like Supreme to be Court recognized for a United question States. before we proceed. Regular order. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be recognized to ask a question before we proceed. The committee received I wouldn't just tolerate last that. night. That's Camilla Harris, who I wouldn't tolerate run for that. president in 2020. So she's putting on some 
political theater for the resistance to show that she's a member. Then, just moments later, America's favorite Muslim, Linda Sowersore, and her friends interrupted the hearing and were all arrested. Oh, and this woman right here is one of the babes who starred in Coyote Ugly back in the day, who apparently has found a new calling in life. Oh, but it gets even better. Sleuths on Twitter saw a member of Brett Kavanaugh's staff who was sitting behind him <laughs> making what they thought were secret hand signs signaling to white supremacists <laughs> that he was on their side. Her name was literally the number one trend on Twitter yesterday from so many Democrats tweeting that they have decoded the secret hand signs. One thing that's not a secret is that liberalism is a serious mental illness. By the way, she's Jewish. And if you guys enjoy watching oh. these videos, I hope you'll support my channel by going to markdice.com and get yourself <laughs> a liberalism. Find a cure t-shirt. There you go. We'll give a little plug to Mark Dice. There you go. Um, yeah, that, you know, did you see what that woman did the next day? What did she do the next day? She sat there, looked right at the camera, smirked, and held up a big old okay sign. <laughs> yep, she sure did. She sure did. That's winning. See... Her husband, which, sorry, I can't remember his name, but I did see his tweet, and I did respond to his tweet. Her husband freaked out and was like, she's not a racist. We're not racist. Please stop bothering us. Don't, <laughs> hey, whoa, I, whoa, we put, the soy, put we the soy swear. latte down, bro. Oh, my gosh. He's such a soy boy. And and so he's a he's a, a conservative Republican. He's on the right. He's a Trump supporter. He's, all, he's with us. But people, you guys in the establishment who spent your entire careers – in Republican politics, you need to start listening to us. You need to start listening to Mike Cernovich, um, uh, Jack Posobiec, these people who uh, know what's going on finally. We're the ones that are getting it right. We're the reason why Trump and the Trump movement is working because we are fed up with it. And by we, I don't mean I'm not excluding all the people that are watching. You guys are all a part of this because – we needed you all collectively to reject this stuff, totally reject it. And it's only the establishment Republicans who are – I'm not talking about people that are anti or never Trumpers. I'm talking about people that support Trump. They've always supported him, but they've also been lifelong Republican operatives or uh, staffers. They've just been in Republican politics their whole life. And they don't know how to deal with the false allegations and the false premises. And I'm here to tell you to stop it. Stop defending yourself or your allies or your loved ones in this case against false allegations or or I should say um, anything that starts with a false premise. A false allegation is a false premise, but any kind of a question – that has a false premise. Like, Brian, when did you stop beating your wife? I, we whoa, need to know whoa, this. Whoa. We need to know when you stopped uh, beating your you wife. Know, no, you, you can't. That's not fair. What are you talking about? I need I, the time. No. I need the time and I'm I need just, the date. When did you oh, stop beating your wife? Why can't you give me a date? No, no. I give never, me a time and I a date. I never beat her. I never. I never so beat her. So you're not wife. answering the question. But I didn't. You're avoid, I look at him. Avoid the question. I want a date and I want a time. When exactly did you stop beating your wife? That's what they're doing to you, and this is how you deal with it. <laughs> you say, um, wh who told you that I was beating my wife? That's how you do it. You, you follow up their question with a question where you attack their premise. The premise is they're asking you, what's the time? What's the date? Right. That's what they're asking you. The premise is that you were beating your wife. Right. You have to reject that and attack the premise. You need to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who told you I was beating my wife? That's obviously a lie. So that way you don't even have to get into what time or date it was that you stopped beating her. Don't even address that. <laughs> no, because the moment you address it, then you're guilty. Right. That's exactly it's, right. It's a trick, trick of tricks. So, so, I'm, so it, it was awesome to see that his wife, the woman that we just saw picking her arm in a way that looked like the OK symbol, which, by the way, the idea that that was a white supremacist symbol. For those of you that don't know, we should go ahead and tell them this. Yes, yes. There was uh, – the whole thing about this being a white supremacy symbol 
has been argued over a year ago. Uh, remember when Mike Cernovich and Cassandra Fairbanks and all them would go in front of the White House press secretary's podium? Yeah, everybody did it. <laughs> and they held up the OK symbol and they got their picture taken and then they posted this all over social media. So the lie came out. And by the way, the lie started with 4chan Trump supporting crap posters. I'll keep it clean here. Yeah. They are officially. That is – that's on their resume. Right, but S- not the word crap. S-H, right. Yeah, it's yeah. SH posters. Uh, post Posters, yeah. They came out with a meme <laughs> that showed oh, the, the Pepe. picture. No, no, it wasn't the Pepe. Oh, okay. It was a picture of a hand with the OK symbol with a line that went through the fingers that looked like a W and a line that went through the circle that looked like a P with a description of the WP – as meaning white power and that people oh, that I remember you, that. Yes. Oh, and uh, it's off there to the left. Oh, it's actually video. Um, but but no, there, there's actually yeah, – right uh, there it is right there. Right here? Yeah, that was put together by 4chan S posters, crap posters. It was picked up by the Southern Poverty Law Center because they're morons and they're and they are they're down with um, they're the opposite yeah. of white supremacists. They are trying to um, they're they're genocidal maniacs. They're trying to they're trying to they're trying to destroy the white race basically. So they picked up on this and uh, they they decided well we need to ban the OK symbol. They sanctioned this meme here. They sanctioned this. And so you see the ACLU picked up on it too. So the Southern Poverty Law Center picked up on it. They they took a hoax and they ran with it because it it furthered their agenda. They got hoaxed. Right. They got trolled. <laughs> it was a great troll because they fell for it. And uh and then if, as soon as they fell for it, what do trolls do? They <laughs> they lift the curtain and say, "Ha, ah, we got you. Got we you punked looking. you. We punked you." <laughs> so that's the whole thing. That's the funniest thing about punks. Is that they reveal the fact that they, that you got punked. That's the funniest part of it. And so that's what happens. So here we are, almost like a, over a year later, maybe at least a year, maybe more, where somebody says, look at her doing the dog whistle, uh, what, you know, the white power hand signal. And everybody fell for it again. It's been revealed as a hoax. And yet here we are. Uh, if you look up top, um, the four chair. That's the that's the troll at the top. Notice how they use the red flag. That yeah. So the whole thing was a complete hoax to make it the red, black, and white with the the OK yeah. symbol in the middle to make it look like it's a Nazi right swastika type flag. Now some people may wonder, well, where did the OK symbol come up with as as a part of the Trump movement? Because I when I first saw it. I asked that. I was like, well, that's – what's with the OK symbol? I'm seeing everybody do and that. We, t- we talked yeah. so big about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and some other people, a bunch of people actually, they said, oh, well, have you ever really stopped and watched Trump speak at a rally? And I'm like, yeah, I watch him at uh, tons of rallies. I've been to five rallies myself. Well, it turns out when Trump's talking and he wants to make a point, he does these three straight fingers and he makes like a – like he's making a point. Like he's like – this is how he makes a point. He says, blah, 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 blah. And he does the little circle with his index finger and his thumb. So he's not doing an OK symbol. He's just making a point. And sometimes he'll do it with both hands at the same time. Right. And so his supporters, some of his uh, supporters and leaders in the Trump movement, have picked up on that and decided to make that the MAGA symbol. <laughs> the ha- MAGA hands. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Trump's doing it uh, up to his eyes at that point. Well, so. I think he's I think he's doing this be- like <laughs> saying that somebody's crying. You know, the media crying. Oh, is that what he's doing? Okay. So if, if you see this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. So they they've juxtaposed. They've shown the white power OK symbol. At least that's what they're calling it. And then Trump with two little. <laughs> he's got two OKs, one on either right. eye, as if he. He's making fun of somebody crying. And one thing I learned, the reason I became a Republican is because I have this this gut reaction, this instant, instant reaction, bad reaction to when I find out that somebody is lying to me or just being dishonest in general. I have this really uh, like a snap gut reaction. It's really visceral. It's it's uh, it's emotional. I can't stand it. 
And I used to be a Democrat because I thought that liberal ideology was more uh, suited to my personality. It just it, – it, it rang true to me. Turns out I was indoctrinated in a inner city public school, so it makes sense why I would think that, that the left was right or correct in, in this case. And um, what happened was is the Bush versus Gore election happened. It started actually with the debates. We had three debates. Going into the debates, I wanted to be to- totally open-minded, and I said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to listen to those debates, and I'm going to determine who did a better job, who I think sounds better, sounds more presidential, and has better ideas. And after the first debate, I thought, wow, Bush sounded much better than I was expecting. I kind of thought that he won that debate. And then the second one rolls around, and I was like, wow, he did. At this time, we're on Yahoo message boards discussing the results of these uh, these debates. That's where you first got tagged. Well, they, I went on there. Labeled. I went on there just discussing in an honest manner what we saw in the debates. And what I found was is people that were supporting Trump, I'm sorry, uh Bush, people that were supporting Bush were uh being honest about what was what was seen. And the people that were supporting Gore, at first I thought, well, you know, I don't think they're accurate in their description of what they saw. And then when they saw that I was pushing back on their description of what happened, their spin, they just started lying and started saying total falsehoods, and that really turned me off. So I would start to reject the people that were lying, and then I realized over time that everybody that was supporting Bush was being honest, and everybody that was supporting Gore were lying. And then that's when I realized, you know, dishonesty is actually a, a principle and a trait, a character um trait of the Democrat Party. Not only that, but this Woodward book yeah. that, that Trump tweeted out about, and, and I even made the comment to somebody. I said, oh, right, yeah. We hear Trump talking like that all the time, everywhere, dropping F-bombs and cussing people out and just saying all kinds of awful reg. Yeah, that, that that's that's how he normally talks. And he made a tweet about that and says, man, I I don't talk like that. I never have. Right. I mean, even in the Access Hollywood uh, video where I don't think that Trump knew he was being recorded at that oh, time. Oh, no. He had no idea. It was a hot He mic. did use the P word. Uh, the the to, posse word? To describe uh, the female anatomy. But I don't think I remember a bunch of other cuss words in there. Normally no. when you're talking like a seventh grader uh, right. you know, a seventh grader um, or an eighth grader who's just getting away from – parents long enough to get away with cussing and you're just talking with your friends, it's like F-bomb every third word. I mean, I don't think I heard any other cuss word other than using the P word, which was for a comedic effect to get Billy Baldwin to start laughing – or Billy Bush. Billy Bush. Billy Bush to start laughing. Who got fired for doing what? For laughing (laughs) at the joke. Right. So Trump makes him laugh and he gets fired. So anyway, moving on. OK Symbol is about Trump's gestures when he's at rallies – that's why um, the people in the MAGA leadership who have the big following and all that on Twitter, they started using the OK symbol. Uh, the 4chan people decided to troll the media. Ca- capitalize by, on it. Capitalize <laughs> on it. by Somebody wanted to troll the media by saying that that's white power. It was a total hoax. They fell for it. Southern Poverty, Poverty Law Center fell for it. The ACLU fell for it. When it was revealed that it was a hoax, they quietly kind of brushed it under the the rug, and they just nobody kind of talks ignored. about it now. Except here we are a year later, somebody's picking their arm like like this. <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, like this, and uh, they got accused of doing a white power She's symbol, conveying a message. The people that were writing <laughs> op or not op eds, but uh, reports about the picking of the arm that looked like the OK symbol were reporting it as. A white power dog whistle, like a secret code. They really were. And I'm sitting here thinking, wait a minute. We rehashed this before. It was a hoax. This is not white power. It's a hoax. You guys fell for it a year ago. And, and they you fell know what? for it again. Fool, fool you once. Yeah. Uh, shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, you're at fault anyway. You got fooled the first time. All right. We'll, shame, we'll say shame on you for a chance. You got fooled a second time. Y'all a bunch of idiots. That's your own dumb fault. Yeah, y'all a bunch of idiots. Now, if they went around doing this, or, or they do this, where they look through, 
What I was told. Have you ever seen this where they go like where this? they flip them all the way? Yeah, it's like a mask. There we go, like that. Yeah, I mean that's really that's bad. white power. Ooh. That's white power for real. But I saw a black person do that before. Whoa! I mean, I went to a, an integrated inner city public school. True, we used true. to do that mask all the time. Okay. Well, I was informed <laughs> by someone who uh, has reads a lot about the Illuminati. Okay. And I was told that if you look through the OK symbol with you your look, eye, okay. You do it like I got glasses on, but you do it with your eye. Okay. And and you see your eye and you take a picture like that. That's that's Illuminati stuff. Oh, you take the picture of you while you're looking through, through the, the whole okay, the, the okay. white power symbol. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that ever. Okay. Is it kind of like uh saying Beetlejuice three times? Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. You are not allowed to talk about that on the show. We ain't going there. We don't man. talk about Beetlejuice? And don't do it three times. Oh, gosh. I already did it twice. We're going to have to go through the whole rest of the show. Not having to say it. And I'm whenever you wave, you, you, 90 degrees. Oh, my gosh. I, I learned that from Rush. I learned that from you. Yeah, Rush said, he said, I tell people all the time, no, I, whenever you go out into public, into a crowd, you always have the full 90 degree. You do not extend beyond 90 degrees. <laughs> if you extend, you are. Every one hundred percent of the time, they accuse you of doing a Nazi salute. Yeah, every one hundred percent of the time, they'll do the the you know the cameras where you press the button and it takes a whole bunch of pictures in rapid succession. As soon as you start waving, they got that thing depressed. Right. So you get the Waiting whole entire for the role. one one picture caught at the right second where you've got extension. Right. If you're extension, then it's all over. Then they go ahead and Photoshop the uh, swastika on your shoulder and it's all over. So anyway, so uh, how we're always defending Trump. (laughs) Carrie uh, sent me a link to a pretty cool video. We'll thank uh, Scott Adams for pointing this out. This is a relatively new channel. They don't only have like 4,000 followers on Twitter. We the internet TV. Yeah, and they're probably a bunch of libs, but you know what? I don't care if you're liberal, conservative, libertarian, whatever you think you are. As long as you stay honest, you're probably going to find a friend with me. Oh, yeah. If you're honest yeah. and, and uh, have a bit of uh, com- comedy or comedical ability, and comedical. just be honest Is about that a real word? I'm, that's awesome. What's, what's we'll the just make it up. What's we the make word I'm things. looking for? Comedic. Yeah, if you have a comedic ability and and you know and you're I'm honest, comedically with it, challenged, and you're not trying to, I mean, don't don't you know? I'm done with the orange thing. To, to, Some people are to, still doing it. Glenn Beck, the dude, the Cheetos. I'm, yeah. I'm, that's, Bill not funny. Maurer, that's not funny. Bill You know, Bill Maurer has a show. I think once a month or something like that. Maybe once a week, whatever it is. Uh, Real time with Bill Maurer. This most recent episode, he called what's going on with Trump Code Orange. <laughs> I swear. Oh, I'm laughing at his uh, his his lack of ability to make a joke. Wow. Anyway, and was, he's got to revert back to orange. You know, it's all about colors if you want to keep it simple. Well, because they're racist. It's not even a primary. Well, color. no, they're they're racist people. That's oh, who they that's are. Right. It's always about color. Yeah, he's, they're racist against orange people. <laughs> and here at Smith Radio, we don't drink racist coffee. Oh, you don't have that queued up. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, We're about to play this one. You can't reference it without hitting play. Oh, All right. Okay. Anyway. So here's the, here's the new video. Check it out. This is really <clears throat> funny. So China just approved for Xi to be president for life. And Trump says, maybe we have to give that a shot someday. Like, enough is enough. How do people ignore that? I'm pretty sure he was joking. Joking about being president for life. Yeah. If you listen to the audio, everybody's laughing. They're clearly in on the joke. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you like Donald Trump? No, I actually... I think there's a lot wrong with the guy. It's just this happens not to be one of those things. I cannot believe I work with a Trump supporter. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Jenny. <laughs> Voted for Hillary. <laughs> Stop making me defend Donald Trump, please. In the elevator. Did you hear about this? What did he do? Donald Trump banned an entire religion. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Muslim ban, so I guess Trump is banning all Muslims from coming here. And he's probably going to kick out the ones that are already here. Actually, it's not a ban against all Muslims. The travel ban is against seven Muslim-majority countries. <laughs> Walking to the car? Yeah, but unemployment's at 4.1%. In the bathroom. Trump isn't shutting down Meals on Wheels. Only 3% of their budget comes from the federal program. On the phone? 
No, Mom, I agree with what he said about Donald Trump. I just don't think it's appropriate to say it at Aretha Franklin's funeral. It's in the elevator. Are you serious, Gary? Oh, I don't agree with it. It's like, if you're so concerned about terrorism, then why isn't Saudi Arabia on the list too, right? Why the f*** are you defending Trump? <laughs> I'm not defending him. You guys are just misrepresenting him. At the doctor's office. Trump is not as bad as Hitler. Okay. <laughs> At the break room? Who put Somebody put a MAGA hat in the refrigerator in the break room with his name on it. Is here? And who took my lunch? <laughs> Actually, LGBT categories have never been on the census, so no, Trump isn't removing them. How much are the Russians paying you, comrade? <laughs> How much are the Russians paying you, comrade? So he's in bed with what appears to be, he's trying to portray this as his husband. husband. So he's a part of the LGBT community, apparently, and uh, makes makes it even more amazing or funny <laughs> that they're accusing him of being a Trump supporter when he says at the very beginning he voted for Hillary. Right. I, but I love this. Everybody, everybody loves this because why does it, why, why would you love this, Brian? Because we know he voted for Hillary. So shouldn't we just be like, oh, screw this guy. Then throw he's, this video he's away. He's talking about the truth. Okay. He's he talking is defend- about facts. Okay. So first he is in fact defending Trump, but while he's defending him, He's also saying that he doesn't support him and there's more that he doesn't like him that he does like about him. But we well, still but we still are OK with this video. Well, like the, the time he said, he said, Mom, no, I agree with absolutely what he said. I just think it was despicable. He said it at Aretha Franklin's funeral. And he's referring to what the pastor that was blasting all over uh, Trump or whatever. So uh, Cl- um, Clinton, Clinton, whoever, said, whoever. Yeah. No, no. I, whoever it was that was blasting all over Trump. Um, he's saying that he agreed with him. Right. He just doesn't think it should be done at Aretha Franklin's funeral. So here's why we like it. Well, you want to finish the rest of it? Oh, there's more. Oh, yeah, it's almost done. It's almost oh, wow. done. Okay, so he's back in the elevator now with uh, with his colleagues. Back in the elevator. Wait till he comes to our place of business and starts collecting our Muslims and getting rid of them too. Hatem and Ali are American citizens. And that makes it okay? What? Oh, no. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. I didn't know you were a white supremacist, Gary. <laughs> Whoa. No, this isn't even our floor. Let's just get the f*** off. <laughs> it's not even no, our that floor. The Let's... He didn't fire Tillerson on Twitter. Tillerson already knew. Trump just leaked the information onto Twitter. Please, stop making me defend Donald Trump. Where's your tiki torch, Pepe? <laughs> Damn it. On the campaign, I called it. The forgotten man and the forgotten woman. Well, you're not forgotten anymore. Thank Is that you, part of Gary, the video? My biggest defender. Thank you, Gary, my biggest defender. They put that on there? Hey, I'm Lou Perez with We the Internet TV. We're the channel that makes fun of everyone, including you. <laughs> yeah, you. I see you. You're next. And you'll never see it coming. Unless you subscribe to our channel. In which case, you'll totally see it coming. Paul... Melissa, dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Trump called out my supporter, Gary. And so he named the guy Gary. Oh, that's funny. In the skit. And so at the very end of the clip, you hear Trump saying, and there's a shout out to my supporter, Gary. <laughs> you know who you are. That's yeah, funny. You know. Well, and okay, so here's the reason why we like a video made by a guy who's constantly reiterating throughout the video that he doesn't like Trump. He doesn't support Trump. He didn't vote for Trump. In fact, he voted for Hillary. And because uh, it's funny when people were calling into the Rush Limbaugh show to let them know that they were Democrats. Almost all of them that got through said, well, I didn't vote for Hillary, but I sure didn't vote for Trump. I got all these problems with it. So these are people that that aren't really fully all in. They didn't even vote for Hillary. But this guy just flat out says he does, or at least this character. But the reason we like it is because he won't sacrifice truth even though he doesn't like Trump. 
He won't let I mean, people get away with saying he, falsehoods. Even when he was talking about the Muslim ban, the travel yeah, ban, all of it—that that's for real, that, that really is said, real. He, what? Yes, he was he was uh, attacking the falsehoods, and it turns out he doesn't realize this. I don't think he realized this when he made this video. But if you attack all falsehoods coming out of the Trump critics with facts. You, you end up defeating their entire argument. You end up winning the argument against the liberals, against the never Trumpers, against the people that are against Trump. He's got truth on his side. I love this video. Right. No, it's phenomenal. You know, I don't know what the guy's politics are. I don't know if it was just a skit to be making a skit or if it was funny to be making funny or if he says he makes fun of both sides, whatever it be. It's pretty good. This was good, well done, well thought out, and that leads us right into – more and more Nazis. More Nazis? We found Nazis this weekend. Okay. Or this week. Okay. This week. Apparently, and um, I think it, it might have been Breitbart. Okay. Either Breitbart or, or Gateway Pundit uh, put up the title of their article was, He's back! <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama! After months and months of silence. Mm. And people were screaming about it. Even... Um, Oh, what's the uh, the really old kooky billionaire, the real creepy uh, Soros? George Soros came out a few weeks ago and said that Barack Obama, in an interview, that Barack Obama was his biggest disappointment. Wow. And and you think about that and read into that a little bit, and I'll tell you exactly what he meant. What he meant was, was that Obama did not close the deal. Obama failed at... Com- the, the 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 coup d'etat. He failed at completing his mission, and so George Soros upset about that. Well, there's been other uh, uh, campaign managers and other people out saying that that uh, they're really frustrated with Obama. He's not helping in the midterms. He's not out talking about this. Not out talking about that. Well, this week, Obama did what Obama does, and it just reminded us all about how awful he was. It reminded us all about why we all voted for Trump in the very first place Right when he spoke at these uh, rallies all across the country for Hillary Clinton, all the lies, the bigotry, the hate, the the fear-mongering, the the, the trying to race, everybody trying to race bait, forcing each other against each other. It was just awful. And so he's back out and he's doing it again. In Barack Hussein fashion and form. And so this week he was stumping for another Democrat because, as we know, leaders in the Democrat Party have already said Hillary Clinton is bad for business because when she goes out to give a speech, she has to wear the muumu dress to cover up her back brace and uh, her health issues, and she has to have the EpiPen nearby. She is carried up. Folks, you're not seeing this stuff. She has helped upstairs. Could you imagine if she won? We're only two years into the presidency. If she had won that election, we would have the first disabled president since FDR. Absolutely. And FDR only went disabled after being reelected and reelected and reelected and reelected. It just would have been strange. I mean, I'm not, it's not anything against disabled people. It's just that this woman is not disabled because she had something happen to her. Uh, or, or or something like that. Muscular it's just, dystrophy it's or, just, or, or spinal injury or you know, it's it's old age accelerated by what appears to me to be a pretty unhealthy lifestyle. She doesn't look like she ever works out. She doesn't look like she eats very healthy. Now I know she's getting up there in age. Is she 70, older? Seventy. So she's younger. She's a little bit younger than Donald Trump. Then, yeah, okay. like a year and a half. But she has not aged very gracefully. I mean, I think she is a well, very sickly the, woman. And even the unhealthy food that Trump ate during the campaign. Look at the energy and stamina he had. Yeah, and we know for a fact, uh, insider from the very oh, inside. Right, right. The vi- if you think of of um, a presidential campaign. Of not just being either you're in the circle or you're out of the circle. It's more like a giant onion of concentric circles that go out. So you could be inside some circles, but you're not really penetrating all the way to the middle. I was temporarily all the way in the middle. Um, 
uh, probably I'll say one layer out because I wasn't in the limo right. with Trump. I was in the limo right behind, behind Trump, Trump right. and I was in with uh, Kurt Schilling and a bunch of other staffers that were in there. And they were in there discussing the horrendous diet that was going on at the time. And that was the last and where, and where they were going where they were going to eat next. Yeah, apparently they do yeah. frequent Mc, uh, McDonald's very often and do Domino's, was it? I think it was yeah. one of those. I think it was Domino's. They do a lot of Domino's pizzas and a lot of McDonald's. I was surprised to hear that. I thought that was fake news when they would report that I stuff. Would, I would have gotten sick of that after a while. Oh, they, they, I don't think they have a choice. Yeah, when you're they on the run. Like, well, when you're in five states doing five rallies in 24 hours. That's unbelievable. Who's ever done that before? Well, most of the campaign he was doing three a day, which I thought was unheard of. Well, I didn't think you could maintain that. Then he ramped up to four towards the last couple of weeks. And then the last couple of days, he went up to five. five. It's unbelievable, especially when you consider that he talks for over 45 minutes for each of these talks. Right. So anyway, so about Oh, Barack Obama. Hussein. Yes. We're going Obama. back to Barack Hussein. Uh, this is not flashback, folks. This is just this past week. Uh, this is a minute and 52 seconds. I, 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 bear with me. I'm sorry, but it has to be played. You have to hear because this should be good news. I know a lot of people in our uh, private message meetup group were, I can't stand to listen to that fool anymore. And I'm like, I know, I know. I know, I know. But here's the good news, guys. Here's the good news. Listening to this now, you recoiling, mm -hmm. everybody else is recoiling too. This is right. a common phenomenon that, that, that Obama why does. Why would we do that to our audience? Well, we're not doing it to the audience. We're doing it to let the audience know. That people don't want to hear this again. It's not like um, it, I, any presidents in memory c coming out. What like Trump is coming out and supporting candidates right now? Um, right, they're upbeat. They're they're praising them. They're talking upbeat praise. I mean, it's like the Trump rally all over again. <clears throat> right, and so Trump sees that Obama's doing this now, and so was Trump do. He ramps it up. And I'm telling you, folks, I was telling Carrie this earlier on the phone when we were talking before the show. I said, I said, you don't understand. Obama is making this about him as if he's running for president again. Right. And that and he's doing it for. Oh, you're talking about Obama. Is. Obama is oh. acting as if he's running for president again. Well, and it's the same thing as Trump. If you really stop and think about it, he's he's making this these like giant campaign campaign speeches and it looks like he's running for president but this is no he's getting for the, the candidates candidate. yeah right. getting the candidates out well when trump speaks though it isn't i i i me 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 right and and i'll let you a little cat out of the bag obama referred to himself a hundred and two <laughs> times in a how long was the speech an hour 64 minute speech. So it was an hour and four. 102 times. So he referred to himself <clears throat> on average two times per minute for 64 minutes. Wow. This is, this is what it is. So, so he has turned this into now, uh, um, Groundhog Day of 2016. That's what this is, folks. And it's getting people that don't normally vote in the midterms. They're like, oh, oh, wow. There's another election again? Okay. Well, just remember. I, I, well, didn't, I didn't think there was another election. It. Let's play it and, and then we'll react to it because I, ha I have something to say, but I, I think I feel like we should play it first. Okay. It should not be Democratic or Republican. It should not be a partisan issue to say that we do not pressure the Attorney General or the FBI to use the criminal justice system as a cudgel to punish our political opponents. or to explicitly call on the Attorney General to protect members of our own party from persecution, prosecution because an election happens to be coming up. I'm, I'm not making that up. That's not hypothetical. It shouldn't be Democratic or Republican to say that we don't threaten the freedom of the press. Oh, you mean the time that you used 
the FBI to threaten the press and then, yes, oh, the, the scandal. James that, Rosen. Yep, James Rosen. Because they say things or publish stories we don't like. James Rosen. He spied on on Fox News and everybody else. I mean, he was just wretched with this. He's a liar. I complained plenty about Fox News. But you never heard me threaten to shut them down. Yes, <laughs> you did. You spied on them. You tried to, to get people in legal trouble after breaking the Fourth Amendment to spy on them. I mean, you are a bald-faced liar. Like, flat out. There is no ambiguity about it. You are a unambiguous liar. It is unbelievable. The facts that we have at our fingertips with the Internet, video, audio, everything we have at our fingertips. You, President Obama, were the first president that everything that you did is all on the Internet. Well, maybe Bush, but everything you did is all on the Internet. It's all on the YouTubes. It's everywhere. And people are digging this up left and right. And it's looking so bad on Obama. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Or call them enemies of the people. It shouldn't be Democratic or Republican to say we don't target certain groups of people based on what they look like or how they pray. We are Americans. We're supposed to stand up to bullies. Uh oh. Not follow them. We're, we're, we're supposed to stand up to discrimination. And we're sure as heck supposed to stand up clearly and unequivocally to Nazi sympathizers. <laughs> Nazi sympathizers, Kerry. Nazis. How hard can that be, saying that Nazis are bad? Well, you know what I tweeted. How hard could it be to say Nazis are Democrats. It's not that hard at all, Kerry. Yep. I can, Nazis I can are say. Democrats. Yep. Uh, now, some people might say, Kerry, 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 hold on, hold on a second. The Nazis were not Democrats. And that may be technically true. I think that uh, Dinesh D'Souza was accused of that exact thing, and he came back and said, I never said that. This is a straw man. And that's true. But we do know that the, the KKK were Democrats. And we also know that the Nazis from Nazi Germany took their playbook from the Democrat Party. We also know that not much has changed throughout the years of the Democrat Party. And last but not least, the Nazis today that show up at places like Charlottesville and whatever are led by Unite the Right, which is led by a man named Jason Kessler, who we know was one of the organizers of Occupy Wall Street – and was a Democrat all the way up until it was clear that Donald Trump was going to be our next president, in which case I could argue, based on his behavior since then, change parties in order to embarrass the Republicans. Right. That's flat out. That's that's real right there. That is flat out real. Jason Kessler is a Democrat plant. He's an Occupy Wall Street organizer. And he's the one that brought the Nazis into Charlottesville, which ended up being a fatal rally for an unfortunate soul there. And that's that's a real shame. But to sit there and to say that somehow Nazis have any connection whatsoever to conservatism in any way, shape or form. Someone will say, yeah, well, they it's all the, say it's the right. It's the right. The far right. They Nazis. all they all support Trump, which num besides the fact <laughs> that that's an association fallacy. <laughs> Please learn fallacies, people. It's it's logical. Uh, you don't want to make uh, illogical arguments. You want to learn logical fallacies. Uh, guilt by association is obviously a, 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 log a logical fallacy. But let's let's get beyond that and just point out that we know that the leaders of these so-called Nazi groups are Democrats. And if they're not Democrat right now, they were when it when it mattered to them. And it seems like they only switch parties just to embarrass Republicans. And so to me, they're just plants. I mean, where is Jason Kessler today? Where is to, Richard Spencer yeah, today? Spencer, Spencer. And Richard Spencer has been totally exposed by Dinesh D'Souza in his new movie, Death of a Nation. Totally exposed. Not only did he get Richard Spencer to admit that he's a progressive, but if he, he also asked him the pertinent questions that got him to expose what he believes are uh, are the are are principles that he 
follows and espouses and, and believes in and agrees with. And they're all the same things that you would hear coming out of a progressive. So not only did he actually call himself a progressive, but he actually agreed with all of the progressive ideology. So what else is there to say? I mean, you keep calling us Nazis, but it seems like you're kind of projecting, right? Oh, yeah, I agree 100 percent. So, Oh, do you have it with you? Uh, this this uh, Dinesh D'Souza clip on the Democrat Party ties to fascism and Nazism, they liked it. <laughs> uh, Good. It's a two-minute clip, so yes. I, I think it might be well worth playing. Yeah, absolutely. Let's turn the volume down now. Oh, I, can, I can adjust it here, too. Okay. So in the 1930s, Up. the Democratic Party was fascinated not only by fascism, but also by Nazism. They liked it. And if this seems a little unbelievable... Uh, young John F. Kennedy uh, went to Nazi Germany in the 30s uh, and came back uh, super excited about Hitler. In fact, full of praise of Hitler. He called him a legend. He goes, there are people who don't like Hitler, but they're jealous of him. He said the Nazis claim to be superior. They claim that the Nordic people are better than everybody else. And he goes, that's because they are. That's because they are. This is JFK. And by the way, I should tell you that nothing I'm about to say this morning is controversial in the sense of it's debated whether it occurred. You can actually Google JFK Nazi Germany 1930s on your phone, and in 30 seconds you'll see that what I just said to you is true. FDR was enamored by Mussolini. Uh, FDR actually dispatched members of his brain trust to go to Italy to study Italian fascism, because he thought Italian fascism was more progressive than the New Deal. And he thought that we, he, he could import ideas from Italian fascism here to America. This was not a one-way uh, fascination. It was a, actually a mutual admiration society. Mussolini reviewed FDR's book in an Italian magazine. He loved it. He goes, my conclusion upon reading this book is this guy is one of us. He's a fascist. This is Mussolini. Now, after World War II, progressive historians looked at all this and they went, whoa, fascism now carries the order of the Holocaust, the gas chambers, Dachau. We can't have this kind of stuff in the textbooks. Young people may find out about it. Let's make sure we prudently leave it out. We're not going to lie about it. We're just not going to say anything about it. So this is a small but telling example of a way in which two of the great progressive figures of the 20th century, JFK and FDR, uh, have been, you may say, protected, protected by the progressive left. There you go. There you go. I'm just telling you, if you haven't seen his new movie, Death of a Nation, you absolutely should. The historical context that he puts everything into. And yeah. then, like we said, he goes one-on-one, -on -one, does a one-on-one -on -one interview with Richard Spencer and literally destroys him. Uh, uh, oh, it was bad. Just, I mean, it was, a, it was very calm. It was very uh, poignant, and he he just one pick, one pick, one, and got Richard Spencer all the way upside down, and he admitted that he was more in he line. Basically said, "Yeah, I guess that makes me a progressive." Party. Progressive, yeah, yeah. which is uh, Democrat and not connected to Donald Trump. Remember, he got he got him to admit who his favorite presidents were, and it was like Democrat after Democrat after Democrat. <laughs> it was like all of his favorite presidents were Democrats, and then he was criticizing the ones that. Would were were Republicans, but not just Republicans with the R next to their name, but also were were pushing the conservative ideology, you know, constitutional ideology uh, that we've held dear for centuries. Really, right. what it boils down to, and uh, he he said, "Yeah, that guy's an idiot," or whatever. You know, he was opposed to to the to the ones that we consider conservatives. So, so people like Jason Kessler and Richard Spencer, who are these you know figureheads of Nazism and KKK and all this crazy stuff, they're LARPs. They are live action role playing, <laughs> LARPing, and they've been planted in those positions by the Democrats, and they're just trying to do the Democrat bidding by by connecting re the Republican Party to something they have never been connected to in any way shape or form and for those of you that say yeah well it's not the party it's the ideology they, they were conservative back then says who 
Says who? They were Democrats back then. The reason the South had become Republican is because they had become less racist. The racists are in the Democrat Party. And I was talking to somebody uh, earlier today, actually, about who, where the racists are. And I said, you know, I'm glad to see that some of the racists that are, in fact, Republicans, these are low-level people, not leaders in any way, shape, or form, but they are holding low-level positions within the Republican Party or in politics. And I said, I'm glad that these people are being marginalized and, and purged. I think it's something that's kind of an antiquated thing, and it makes me wonder if there's any truth to – to it when it's when we're accused of having a racist party, even though it's also at least as bad, if not worse, on the Democrat side. And you know what he said? He said, you know what, Kerry? I think it's more of an establishment thing. The MAGA movement is the movement of inclusion of right. everybody. Well, you got people color blindness. Right. You all got that. people saying now, I, I don't call myself a Republican. I call myself a, a Trump vote. I'm like, man, that's what it's all about. It's all about that ideology. Donald Trump has been able to uh, put into words and, and, and paint the broad picture of what a true conservative party should look like. He's been able to do it. He's been able to beat back the critics with the likes that no Republican that we have seen in, in, in a long, long time has been able to come back or to debate or to uh, vocalize or to, to, to express the ideologies of conservatism and what our party originally was and is the the party of Lincoln uh, freeing slaves uh, across the nation. The only party that did it, the Democrats voted 100 percent not to Democrats of the South wanted to keep their slaves. And after the war was over, Reformation, the Democrats still voted against it. Those were the Democrats of the North. Not the Democrats of the South because they were not allowed to vote because they lost the war. It was the Democrats of the North That's amazing, that were still it? racist. That is amazing. So it doesn't matter if you're in the North or the South. If you're in the Democrat Party, you you're much more, much more likely. <laughs> so when I say that uh, when, when Obama tries to say how hard is it to say Nazis are bad, he better it's, – it's appropriate that he was saying that to a big crowd full of Democrats. In – Illinois, and I got right. some uh, feedback from some of our conservative Illinois friends saying, uh, can't you do something and get him out of our state? No, I'm afraid the patient uh, that is the state of Illinois has uh, uh, terminal cancer, uh, stage four or maybe even five. Uh, however high the numbers go, that's what you've got. And uh, there's no turning Illinois back. I'm sorry because of this, the uh, city of Chicago. Uh, more. More shootings, more shootings, epic amount of shootings, and just total chaos. I wonder if they'll ever associate the chaos that's going on in Chicago with the fact that it's being run by Democrats. It's hard because when you've been there your whole life, you don't know anything different. You don't know that thousands of people being murdered on a yearly basis is not normal. Right. And nope. that you don't have to live that way. Right. And that you're only putting up with it because you don't know that if you just – elect a Republican and stop believing the lies that the Democrats are telling you and vote for a Republican, you have a chance to live the kind of normal life that you see outside of Fallujah. Right, <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but the last Republican mayor of Chicago, uh, his term ended in 1931. Uh, his name was Big Bob. Apparently, he was a big, giant, tall stature of a man with a big, giant 20-gallon, 10-gallon Cowboy hat or whatever. In Chicago? Yeah, man. Look Sounds it up. Sounds a little out of out of uh, place almost. I, I mean, he was a real charismatic guy apparently according to some of the articles I was reading. But Big big Bob. Oh, Big Bob. No more. It was 1931, folks. Right. We're coming up on 100 years of that. So Make it, sure you guys are sharing on uh, – uh, looks like Periscope. Got some numbers on Periscope. You want to go ahead and share that with everybody and hit those hearts while you're at it. Excellent. Thank you so much. So – if you're the, if you're new on the show and this first time you've seen the show, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Smith Radio, Military Veteran Talk Radio. I am Brian Smith, and this is my co-host. Kerry Smith. And back in the 90s and late 90s, Kerry was in the Marine Corps, and I was in the Air Force, and we've been talking back and forth politics. We'll, we'll go hours and hours and hours on end, and we've been doing this 15-plus years. And about four years ago, five years ago, we decided, man, we need to jot down this information, maybe for our kids or for other generations, whatever, and it was audio only. 
Uh, we documenting the demise of America. Right. But then Donald Trump showed up and we kind of did a U-turn. It got exciting. Yeah, you know? got a little fired up. I still up. felt like there was a long way to go. And even to this day, I mean, we have people that are, are coming out in the New York Times claiming to be part of the inner circle <laughs> that are openly sabotaging the presidency, which, by the way, by extension, that's sabotaging we the people because yeah. – Donald Trump is the representative of the people who put him there and elected him there, and it's the majority if you believe in democracy and you and you right. respect that, which we know the Democrats don't because if they did, they wouldn't be doing seditious activities like doing a coup d'etat. Or if – I mean if you're a member of government, permanent member of government, which we refer to as the deep state, nothing yeah. sinister there. It's just what we ended up deciding to call it, and you find the need to – Ignore the will of the people who want Donald Trump to be our representative in the White House and just decide, you know what, I think it would be better if I went ahead and intervened with my own activity. And I know I'm one single person amongst 320 million. Mm -hmm. But me, is this, I, I know I'm better. Important. I'm that important. I yeah. know better. Oh, y'all. I know better. I'm that important. And, oh, you know, the whole I, the whole fact that I hadn't been elected, it's a technicality. I just don't have the personality to uh, convince 65 million people to vote for me. So, um, But they would if they knew. If they only knew. If right, they right. knew what kind of person I was, how <laughs> smart I am, and how good of a of judgment I had. <laughs> And how moral I was, I'd make the best president in the world. So I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll just do it secretly. Nobody will know the better. I'll just, I'll just manipulate the paperwork, you know, steal uh, documents off the desk, you know, do this, do that, and the other in the West Wing, in order to prevent Donald Trump from doing the things that the voters of America were too dumb and too blind yeah, yeah, to know. see were coming. That's yeah. really what it boils down to. Right. And, folks, the term is sedition. Yeah. Uh, I know they keep screaming treason, treason, right. treason and I, against and Trump. Yeah. But, but point but you, that out. But, That's really good. But the real term is sedition. The act that they are committing to, uh, to, to, overthrow, to thwart law and order and to overthrow the government is sedition. Treason is an act that is committed during a time of and we war. Have, we have a legal uh, uh, statement here. Sedition is conduct which is directed against the government and which tends towards insurrection but does not amount to treason. Yeah. Treasonous conduct, conduct consists of levying war against the United States or adhering to its enemies, giving them aid and comfort. So that's the difference. You have to wage war against the United States. Um, I mean, now, I guess now, if the could, coup, if the coup was waging war, I mean, one could say that like uh, John Wilkes Booth was waging war by assassinating the president as a result of the Civil War, I guess. And some people should say, could say that the South should have been, you know, all the leaders of the South, the people that started the Civil War could have. Uh, well, actually, some people say that uh, Abraham Lincoln started the war and the South didn't want to actually go to war. But. To secede from the Union could have been uh, construed as treason, you know, stuff like that, waging war against uh, the United States. But uh, sedition is the correct word, Con conduct which is directed against the government and which tends towards insurrection but not amount to treason. There you go. It's simple as that. And it's, it's sedition. And that's exactly what these uh, these folks in the FBI and the rest of them are attempting to do. And, and Barack Obama, given his speech – uh, this by Gateway Pundit, bitter Barack Obama breaks months of silence to trash Trump, complains Trump getting credit for the economy. Obama mocks Trump's economic miracle and says, don't forget when the recovery actually started. <laughs> so, so Obama, he's quoted saying, uh, I complain plenty about Fox News, but never threatened to shut it down. It's probably a good time to remind you that Barack Obama used the Espionage Act to go after whistleblowers who leaked to journalists more than all presidents combined. Previous presidents, yeah, all yeah. of them combined. That, which makes sense because the Fourth Amendment generally is understood to protect right to search citizens and seizure. Yeah. from this. Right. So, yeah. 
And then Dana Loesch uh, tweeted out, you spied on their reporters, you seized phone records and personal emails and declared James Rosen an enemy of the state. Holder himself signed the secret search warrant application. And we know Eric Holder's a dirty, dirty dog. Yeah, all this stuff is a blatant, open disregard for the Fourth Amendment, which, of course, we know is part of the law of the land. So this is lawless activity. It's unconstitutional. It's anti-American. Uh, it's it's just terrible. So Trump, uh, what do you think Trump did? Trump, Trump trolled back. <laughs> Trump's got to troll back, right? So Trump trolled back. He said, uh, he said, sorry, I watched it, <clears throat> but I fell asleep. You know, that, uh, that Obama, he's very good for sleeping, <laughs> for trying to take credit. Oh, God bless it. Guys, Trump is taking us all in stride. Trump is strong. Trump loves the fight. you got to understand, at first we thought maybe that this was too much because we've seen all politicians in the past buckle under this kind of pressure. Democrats have never, ever seen resistance to, uh, to buckling, resistance to their hate and their anger. Uh, and their name calling. They've never seen anybody as strong as Trump to be able to take this and let it bounce off him like water off a duck's back. It don't make no never mind to Trump. And uh, I think uh, I think it was either Joe De- De Geneva that was talking about it, but said Trump loves the fight. He oh, said this yeah. is this is this is he's he's at home with this kind of stuff. Right, right. This is not something that he's going to cower away from at all. No. So Trump was out there and he was supporting <clears throat> Kevin Kramer in North Dakota saying that I found he's a very, very good uh, candidate to support uh, Kramer, Kevin Kramer. These are names that we would never know of. And and granted, we live in the state of Ohio, so North Dakota doesn't mean anything. But but the fact that he's getting these, these names out, getting the name recognition, maybe when it comes time for big votes to come up and we see these people... You know, we got a voice like this on the Internet. Maybe you live in North Dakota. You may run across us and you're like, oh, I didn't know Kevin Kramer was that good. (laughs) I have to keep him on my Rolodex. And that's the guy I vote for next. So I'm really excited about uh, Trump being out there. Uh, And this I said earlier, Lou Dobbs tweeted out, Obama reminds voters how insufferable he is. Obama refers to himself 102 times during a 64-minute speech. Uh, uh, hashtag MAGA, hashtag tr- uh, Trump train, America first, and hashtag Dobbs. Who is his speechwriter? You would think that they would try to avoid that obvious pitfall. That was the thing that he was criticized for the most. That was the thing that the the uh, Obama supporters tried to pin on Trump until they realized he never does that. So uh, but one here, one thing I'll tell you, if anybody I don't even know if anybody listening right now is worried about Obama coming out of the woodworks and trying to support these candidates in order to figure out how to make this blue wave happen, which right. seems like it's really turning into well, the reason nothing. Why, well, the reason why Obama's out is because there is no blue wave. Right. right. So they had to pull out the uh, the ringer. The only thing they got. And they are they're really going to find out that this isn't going to work. And here's why I think that that it shouldn't it shouldn't be anything to get alarmed over. And I don't think that you guys are because I fo- I follow you guys on Twitter. I listen to which <laughs> if you tweet at me, I've I've read it. Period. I, I read every single tweet uh that I'm that I'm tagged in or anything like that. It comes across my line and I see it every time. I always check my notifications. You guys don't seem too worried about it, but here's why I'm not worried about it either. Um, you know, Trump is Obama's legacy. What, yes. What Obama yes. has done for eight years has caused us to decide we need Trump to fix all this. And we've been winning so much for two years now, just winning and winning and winning. Actually, more than two years if you count the campaign. Right. That it's easy to kind of. You know, time is what time is. You could forget just how bad the Obama administration was, how bad the Obama presidency was, how his policies caused the downfall of America. Everybody talks about it's a a management of the downfall of America. No, I think it's actually the cause of it a lot of times. And I think that you forget about that stuff sometimes. And you bring him out and he tries to act all presidential. And then you realize when you hear that voice – Oh, right. That's the guy that we had to listen to. 
It's like a like Pavlov's dog, you know, ringing yes. that bell. You ring the bell you and hear, you, you cringe. Yeah, as soon as you hear his <laughs> his voice, it. Uh, by the way, did you know uh, the sense of smell is right next to your um, your memory? memory yeah. But you know the ears aren't very far either. And you you know when you listen to a song that you haven't heard since you were in like tenth grade. Oh, I, you know if they play one of the Beastie Boys songs, I know oh. every single word. And it brings back memories. Like whenever I listen to uh, "Color Me Bad," <laughs> oh, God. So I'm not kidding. Whenever a "Color Me Bad" song comes on, I always remember my time in junior high when I was with my friends. At King's Island. Don't ask me why. Or uh, um, uh, Mariah Carey, her early stuff, when she first came out, like she was 18 years old, 19 years old, and she just became a huge hit on you know some of her early songs. It takes me back to King's Island, which, wow. by the way, is our local uh, amusement park. Big, when, when I uh, When I listen to the Beastie Boys, it takes me back to playing uh, in the neighbor's long, long, sloped yard, playing back, backyard football. And it was so sloped and so bad, but it was the straightest yard. And you played football there. Right. In and a sloped we, yard. We would take turns <laughs> playing the bad side. Okay. And, so, so, and they, they were playing Beastie Boys. Okay. And so at, just as those uh, sounds and songs remind us of, of good things, memories, of good memories. Or, or whatever memories. It could be it, something could jog your memory of something bad, such as the sound of a voice we haven't heard in a while. And that would be. Barack oh. Hussein Obama. As soon as he starts speaking, I think people are going to remember that America was in its darkest hour since the world, you know, World War II, or since uh, the Carter administration. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, I was uh, a baby during the, like, literally a baby during the Carter administration. But I've seen movies that feature his voice in one of his popular speeches in it. And I just remember how how bad things were, how dark <laughs> yes. of an hour we were. We had a whole bunch of Iranian uh, or American hostages in Iran and right. all this kind of stuff. And oh, it was just it was bad. Bad, bad, bad. So, so I, I welcome it. This is why I'm okay yeah. with Barack Obama coming out of the woodworks and stumping for his commiecrats or his uh, democratic socialists. That's the only time you could use the word democratic. Right. Okay. If you if you talk about the Democrat Party. If they insist on being called democratic, you must go ahead and throw socialist on the end of it. Okay. Democratic socialist. Or you can call them international socialists okay. or the inter-Nazis. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I like that. The inter-Nazis. inter-Nazis yes. Yeah, because it's, it's inside. The there's Nazis. national socialists and then there's uh, international socialists. So there's the Nazis and the inter-Nazis. So uh, it got to uh, – the, the speeches back and forth got to be about the economy and uh, Obama just uh, lamenting. That this economy is not giving him credit, or he's not getting credit for this economy. Just absolutely, it was so telling. It was so pathetic, and it was so, it's just so sad. It was like, he's like, you know, my four year old kid throwing a temper tantrum wanting ice cream. I was so. Does he do that? No, he doesn't. But oh, okay. You could, the image is in there. You could imagine. So Matt Drudge, in a very rare, trollicious mood, Matt Drudge actually tweeted out, this is rare. Matt Drudge doesn't normally do this kind of thing and take a political side, but he's Matt, the one with the hat, right? Yep, the one with the hat, and um, he, he's got the b- both accounts there on on Twitter, uh, the Drudge Report and and Matt Drudge. He's Matt the, Drudge. Yeah. Uh, so uh, trolls Barack Obama and warns Democrat in rare tweet. Tweet goes: Democrats lost a grand total of one thousand forty two federal posts under Obama's presidency. This includes congressional, state legislature, and governorships. This was a repudiation of Obama's policies. Matt Drudge also pointed out the carnage in the House and the Senate under Barack Hussein Obama's presidency and then said, now the former president is determined they never get them back. Hmm. So Obama's going back out, which is going to determine... That you will never win again because of what you're doing. Because of him being out on the trail, Democrats. It's a Hail Mary, right? You ain't winning because you ain't got nobody to catch. You're, wow. throwing, you're throwing the ball, Hail Mary, down to the end zone. Ain't nobody down there. There's a lot of people saying, you know, this blue wave, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. They're, they're judging this based on 
statistics. They're like, okay, anytime there's a change election, we got a new president, his first two years always results in big losses in the House and the Senate on the very next midterm election. So they're literally only going by statistics, historic right. statistics. They're not they're not taking anything else into consideration when they talk about this blue wave. They're just saying, hey, look, it happens every time. Well, not only that, but what is, what is your message? They have not impeached Trump. And, and to be honest with you, they've been silenced on that. They, 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 yeah, they've been told by party members, high up party members and, and, and uh, old Democrat dogs and that, that have been around for a lot, 30 years, 40 years. I don't think that means years, anything. And said, hey, uh, that ain't a winning strategy. Right, but I'm don't just, think that because they're not going to talk about it or they deny, well, they pull the lever. Yeah, they're they're going to go straight for impeachment if they get the um, numbers in the House. It's not going to mean anything. I hope. Let's just take this crazy hypothetical that there is somewhat of a blue wave that causes us to lose the House, maybe even lose the Senate. But don't forget that it takes an extraordinarily large number of Senate votes in order to actually remove him physically from office. Yeah. So my this is my um, advice in a unbelievable scenario, a hypothetical, if you will, that there is a blue wave. And my advice is tell them when they start to threaten you with impeachment to bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Seriously. Look at, them with com- look at them dead straight in the eye with confidence. Yeah, because the people aren't going to put up with it. And we know from the Bill Clinton impeachment that if it's not justified, it's going to be – Backfire. It's going to backfire. It's going to be received with a lot of backlash. And um, there it's are, going to cause Trump's numbers to go way up. It's going to cause him to win in 2024. Like we know he's going to ha- it's going to happen anyway. His win in 2024 is pretty much all but sealed. Um, I'm predicting that there's going to be somewhat of a red wave in 2020 because like Brian just said, what is their message? They're really flailing on this. What would I have to vote for a Democrat on this this election cycle? And, And let me get a little bit more in detail when it comes to Obama. A lot of people voted for Obama and a lot of people, less people, but a lot of people still voted to reelect him in 2012. But not as many came out to vote. As 20, it was kind of surprising. Oh, wait. Right. The numbers were down and the numbers were way down for Republican as well. Right. And so there's this number of people that came out to vote for Obama because they supported him. The ones that didn't vote for him, I find it a little hard to believe that he picked up supporters, Obama supporters, that didn't vote for him. That's kind of hard to believe. What we do know for a 100 percent fact is the Trump – constituency is made up of a pretty eclectic bunch. You got your Republicans that aren't never Trumpers. So these are just Republicans that are more like your Tea Party type, libertarian types. Uh, so that those people are all for Trump. Those people did not even remotely support Obama in any way, shape or form. So we can pull them off the table because they're going to vote for Trump or whoever Trump says to vote for anyway. Right. So right. so you pull those people off the table. Then uh, there's a lot of people. And I think that people are missing this. This is the part that people are missing. There is a lot of people that voted for Obama because they thought that he was going to be something that he wasn't or they were just supporting him for whatever reason, who either A, voted for Trump in 2016, which, I mean, you got your Cassandra Fairbanks. She was a uh, Bernie supporter. She liked uh, Obama as far as uh, last time I checked. My, my millennial? Was a, was a Bernie supporter, but turned and, and voted Trump right. because he was so angry about Hillary. And the Bernie supporters, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a vast majority of them voted for and supported Obama. So you got the ones that actually voted for Trump that also voted for Obama. My question to you is, whose side are they going to fall on when both of them come out of the woodworks? I mean, it's it's one thing. To say, well, yeah, I, I loved Obama. I supported him. I just voted for Trump because uh, I also think he's going to be good. I don't think so. No. I think there's been a mutiny on well, ideologies were, here. Oh, yeah. Well, not only that, but a lot of people are upset that the Hopi changey never happened and it went right. sour and went south. It went bad. It went bad. So you're saying those people are going to have somewhat of a bitter 
feeling towards Obama now because oh, sure. they, they felt ripped off. Well, they she, didn't get what they what they paid for. Right now, Obama's out on a campaign trail d- doing what he did before, and it's like a broken record. They're like, this is right. Groundhog Day all over again. Right. Now, the other – before you move on, the other type of – of uh, Obama supporter that would that is for Trump now are the ones that did not vote for Trump in 2016, but have since come around. I think that number is is that that's a little bit of a monster t- type of vote. People don't realize people aren't thinking about that. There are people who there's a reason why the the election was so close in 2016 between Hillary Clinton and Trump. It's because there were people that were just like, hey, I vote Democrat. And I think Trump is a bad person. Well, I think we had to take we, – we took a chance. I think he's going to – no, no. They voted for, for Hillary. No, but I mean like even us. We took a chance. Right, right. We, we took a chance. Yeah, they think, oh, as soon as he gets in office, he's going to pound on that red button. He's going to launch missiles. He's going to cause wars. Right. Uh, the end of the war is happening. But guess what? It didn't. So here's people that voted for Barack Obama. They voted against Trump or they didn't vote for Trump because they believed – all the lies about him. Two years later, I think that there's a lot of people who support Trump now that voted for Obama back then that did not vote for Trump because they were worried and now they support him. They are going to stay with Trump's recommendation over Obama's. And in fact, they may actually be they be they'll be reminded. Right. They'll be reminded why yeah. they left. Absolutely. So I believe that when 2018 election rolls around, you're going to this is the reason why I think you're going to have a massive red wave red wave and I think that this this would have been a great whiteboard presentation with the with the Venn diagrams with the circles like these are people that voted for Obama but vote for Trump. And these are yeah, we need to do that. So check this out. James Woods tweeted out he said whether you love him whether you love or hate him, Trump's ascendancy to the presidency was a once in a century miracle. He was literally the man without a party yet beat 16 primary competitors and an opponent whose victory was her manifest destiny. I can't believe you don't have my tweet there. It was a political feat. Dude, you shouldn't do that. Go ahead. Right in the middle. Let me read that. Hit it. Uh, It was a political feat unequaled in history. And that's a fact, folks. That's an absolute fact. I responded directly to him saying, it's amazing how one man can help an entire movement re-energize itself two years after his epic loss. Groundhog Day, anyone. Hmm. I'm just, this is what it is. It is almost, um, uh, it's like, I, I, the title of the show, Obama Fuels Trump 2020. Uh, Obama fuels the 28th. He's fueling this, and we're all getting fired up all over again. It's election time again. People are getting engaged. And like I was saying earlier, some of the folks that just don't normally vote in a midterm, they're just sitting around going, uh, what? There's another elect? Well, I I guess I better do it. I mean, it's another elect. It's Trump, and he's doing good things. Right. People are going to know. That Trump is responsible for all the good things that are happening in America. He he said during a very bad time in American history that he's going to make America great again. And it and to be honest with you, I thought maybe maybe if he can get the full eight years, he can turn this thing around because we saw Obama try or say he was trying. I'm sure that he wished that he could make the utopia that he wished he could make. Uh, the communists – always seem to fail to realize that it fails every single time. They right. really, truly, if they knew it failed every time, they would stop and become, you know, conservatives like us. But they don't seem to ever know. And so they try and try again. And we sat there through eight years of him trying to create this utopia. And, of course, uh, the eight years prior to that, we saw Bush flailing around. And he was uh, – what was he billed as? The um, – a compassionate conservative. <laughs> he made us so angry because he was such a cuck. He was so silent. He was so non combat He was taking it from both sides and doing what he was supposed to do. And we were so angry. Yeah, he thought that it was beneath the dignity of the office of the presidency to respond to these bitter critics that were bashing all over me. Well, 
Trump hopefully, hopefully permanently ended that. I think that anybody that runs as a Republican at any level, including the presidency into the future, that rejects the idea that we should be going against and pushing back on the uh, the negative stuff coming at you. I, I think Trump has proven that wrong in every way, shape, and form, that you should just remain silent and, and maintain the dignity of the presidency. What about a, a President Pence in one day? Could you imagine? He doesn't look like somebody that would fight back much. No, uh, Pence will not be president. <laughs> right. It'll be somebody like a Jim Jordan or uh, – Yeah, I, I mean – I worry about Jim Jordan. He, um, as much as I support him, and I really love his ideology. He's he's right about so many things. I would actually like to see him become a uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, Ooh, which is wow. kind of yeah, it's kind of um, out of the wheelhouse for somebody that's been in uh, Congress for so long. But the thing about Jim Jordan that worries me is that he really got defensive. Oh, when he, when he when got accused. The false allegations. Yeah. He really got worried. You got, got to know how to handle that. Yeah, I don't think he should have got so worried. Yes, fight back, but don't be, don't act so worried about it because there was nothing to worry about. Unless it's real, right. which we knew it wasn't. But he just seemed worried about it because those kinds of attacks have worked so many times over the years. So, and this is why we voted for Trump. These are the things, the things that he said on the campaign trail are the things that we desperately needed to hear. And the things that he's been doing for the past two years is exactly what he said he was doing. And this is a 20 second clip from the camp, uh, the Republican convention. But no longer have a voice. I am your voice. That's what we wanted to hear that, that he was going to stand up for the working class man, that he was going to be there for us. And I tell you what, we played a video a week or two ago uh, where CNN beating the streets and going around talking to average Joe folks, got, got a hold of a, 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 a guy and his wife that are retired, have their money in the stock market, that have voted for Obama both times. They were white, by the way. Voted for Obama both times and voted, took a chance on Trump. And said, absolutely, we're all in now. So, so you, you're, you actually know a real world example. Would this person say, oh, well, now that Obama's back, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally on board with him again. I mean, hell, the only reason I'm not uh, supporting him uh, actively now is because he's, he was term limited. But I'll tell you what, if he had a chance to come back, I'd vote for him in a heartbeat. Would that, is that what they would say? No, because – they put together – this is a 49-second montage. This is the, the two different worlds, the two different presidents, two different economies, and this is the media – Joe Scarborough is in on this one too. This is the media commenting on each presidency in that time and uh, as it was going on. When you hear how great the economy is doing right now, let's just remember uh, when this recovery started – Construction jobs, Michelle, for that's example, a, that's a horrific awful, number. That's horrific. one of the lowest numbers we've seen in years. Under Since January of 2011. Yeah, very, oh very bad. God. That labor force participation rate of 62.8% is the lowest since February of 1978, 36 years. This has just stopped dead in its tracks and actually contracted. This is the Trump economy. 201,000 jobs added last month. It's a big number, positive sign. It keeps getting better and better and better. I, I think it's another blockbuster report. Jobs are growing. Things are looking good. 3.9% unemployment. That's a wow number. The economy is booming and things are going awesome. And so that's the media. <sighs> I got to ask you, though. It said at the bottom that it was uh, paid for by the Republican National Committee. That, so it was part of an ad. The GOP tweeted that out. Okay, so why did they blank out like the CNN logo? Well, you'll probably get sued. But it was obviously a CNN broadcast. Well, you know, you don't want to be responsible. But it, I don't think they're going to be able to argue in court that they didn't get that from CNN. That's the thing. <laughs> why do you have to block that out? Unless, unless there's some sort of an, uh, a regulation that says that you can't make a rebroadcast look like it's actually coming from the original broadcast. So for oh. instance, I put, I have a commercial and in that commercial, I have a 10 second clip from let's say Fox news, like what you have uh, popped up right now on your computer. 
Uh, if I just played that for 10 seconds in a commercial, you might accidentally think it's, that you're watching Fox <laughs> News. Yes. Okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. So you're going to see here on the very far left, the, the woman who speaks the entire time, just, just a, couple, a couple of minutes long. Um, oh, it's a minute long. Dean Bor- Borelli. She actually follows us on Twitter. Uh, I've had conversations with her. Uh, she's former military, and she respects military personnel and follows us as well. Very, very intelligent, very beautiful uh, black woman who was on Fox News. And her uh, uh, the only ma- the only uh, soy boy on here, he's a Democrat. But he tries to speak up. But this is... Dean Borelli on the economy and the Democrats and what their message is. First of all, the Democrat Party, I think, has a a, a number of problems. There are big divisions because you have the activists, the liberals who want to bring in socialism. They are further to the left. And then you have the establishment Democrats who don't want to go that far to the left. So Mm -hmm. their message is split. And not only that, you have uh, people like Maxine Waters, for example, who was calling Mm -hmm. for folks to get in the faces of Trump administration administration personnel to uh, go after them at the restaurants and gas stations. There are a number of issues that the Democrat Party is facing. They're not talking about policies that will help hardworking Americans. None of them That's supported the tax cuts. We're seeing the benefits of the tax cuts and roll back in regulations. Uh, wages are going up. People are getting bonuses, more jobs and manufacturing. There are over 400,000 jobs since President Trump became president. So we're looking at a good economy that is clipping along, and that, that so, is something that Americans are concerned about. So the whole time, the Democrat, all he has is shaking his head no <laughs> to the facts that she's throwing out about what is going on in this economy. And and talking about before, the economy, uh, the white, let's see, uh, they called it August Rush. That's Uh, amazing. That's a huge number. 201,000 new U.S. jobs, wage growth. This is also big. Wage growth, 2.9% up. That's That's unbelievable for only one month? That's big. Wage growth. That's amazing. Because these companies are now starting to see the money coming in, their employees producing, and now they have the ability to give that money up. Uh, the White House tweeted out for the first time on record, the number of open jobs has surpassed the number of job seekers. For the first time on record, the number of open jobs has surpassed the number of people looking for a job. Wow. That, you, you know that's going to drive – yeah. yeah. And that's what drive wage wages up. I was just kind of scrolling through the Facebook. I didn't even know Facebook did this, but apparently you, you can list jobs on a, a special uh, list on Facebook. So I'm scrolling through and they have like the wage – the hourly rates next to the job and I just was curious to see. And some of them I was surprised to see how high they had gotten and there were some of them that were like – Dude, you're not going to get any applicants for that for that price. <laughs> like there was one that was like an eight fifty per hour. That's not going to happen. No, there were some on there that were like twenty dollars an hour, which I thought, well, what, I wonder what these were, and I'd click on them, and and they were pretty amazing. You know, and if you have a job skill, and and I'm talking to my daughters about either going in the military or going to a a, a, a job. Uh, what do they call that? Where you uh, learn a trade, trade school. You like vocational. Right, going to trade school. Mm -hmm. I am not telling them to go to college. College right now, as we speak, college is the biggest waste of money. If you can get out there, get out there in the workforce, build your uh, uh, your career, start your career, start your what it is that you're good at and you love doing at an early age, you're going to be poor. That's just the way it is. But if you start at it at 19, 20 years old, by the time you're 35, you're going to be doing very well for yourself. Like I told my millennial that works with me, he's been working at this job for 10 years now. Uh, he's 30 years old. And I said, man, I'm going to tell you right now, I know it might look like grass is greener on the other side, but this is one of the best jobs I've ever seen. And if you hang in there, that you're going to get the money. You got to got to get in there and demand it. Right. Show them what we've done in the past year and you've been a big part of that and you're going to get it when you go in there and ask for it. So, um 
White House tweeted out again, terrific news for hardworking Americans who've struggled for so long. This is the lowest level of unemployment benefit applications since the end of 1969. It's a 50-year and that, that saves us taxpayer money. Right. And they put in parentheses, these applications are a proxy for layoffs across the U.S. And then they, this was a quote from the Wall Street Journal. So that was from the Wall Street Journal that the White House tweeted out. Um, there's a, a, a link that you sent me on economiccollapseblog.com. <laughs> it was talking about – I couldn't find a date on it, but I scrolled to the bottom in the comments – were dated six years ago, and they were talking about uh, when when Barack entered the White House. Gasoline was a dollar eighty five six years ago. It was three fifty nine. I remember when it got in in Cincinnati. It got up to four twenty five. It didn't stay there very long. It just it it went up and peaked there and popped right back down. But I just remember when it got to four twenty five, I was just like, okay, this is prohibitively expensive. This is a problem. And when I lived in California at the time, and it hit like for diesel fuel was creeping up to six dollars a gallon. Oh, that's and you're like, diesel fuel, what who cares about it? No, no. The the cost of diesel fuel affects all goods and services. Yes. All your food, all your products. Everything is, is right. dependent upon diesel fuel. You pay for diesel fuel. You do. Every single thing that you buy that has to be shipped anywhere is is the the product that you just buy is is factored into the price of diesel according to the united states representative betty sutton an average of 23 manufacturing facilities permanently shut down in the united states every single day during the year 2010 23 manufacturing facilities shut down every day that's during the 20 the year 2010 it's hard to remember that but when you think really hard you start to remember there was it was bad the obama administration the the obama era was so bad i mean um I, I tried to a lot of times why i don't have very vivid memories of it is because you just block it out you just got to block well, it do out. Do you remember the, the the debt when when he left when he took office the debt was 9 trillion dollars. When he left office, it was creeping almost close to 20 trillion dollars. Right, and what that basically meant to us was that the debt obviously doesn't matter at all. It means nothing. It's it's just a number that means nothing. Uh, it went from how are we going to pay this off to oh you mean we don't have to pay this off? Right. That's kind of the right. attitude that you end up with, and you you almost have to dare the world to come uh, start a war with you to collect it. <laughs> right. Uh, during the fiscal 2011, the U.S. government spent over 454 billion dollars on interest alone for the debt. Mm. So a half a trillion dollars in interest every year. So anyways, these are numbers that we got to get, get, get back to. And Donald Trump is very aware of what's going on. But to jumpstart, kickstart this economy and get it rip-roaring is what it's all about. Uh, and Donald Trump is doing that. I mean, these numbers are incredible. Um, I think I had one on yeah, – we played that one on the uh, the economy. Oh, yeah, and check the time too. And I didn't really – I always lose track of time on this show. Okay, 48. We'll play the Dan Bongino one. Dan Bongino speaks out against uh, uh, the flan, fan flaming of Barack Obama and just absolutely obliterates him. Love Dan Bongino. It was disgraceful. Um, I mean that. It really was. And, and let me be clear on this. I don't really have a problem with former presidents speaking out. I know the norm has been for former presidents to remain silent and allow their successor um, um, to govern effectively. I really don't have an issue with that. There's no rule about that. It's a constitutional republic, and Barack Obama is a free citizen. What was disgraceful about He's free for right now. 
that <laughs> is Barack Obama was one of the most divisive presidents in American history, Pete, constantly relying on identity politics to put people in the boxes the Democrat Party chose and Barack Obama highlighted and then sicking them against one another. Remember, when Barack Obama left office, upwards of 60 percent of people said the country was headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And one of those reasons was not just the economy. It was the fact that people were tired of this, this constantly throwing the flames on, on this fire of racial division yeah, in the country. And mm -hmm. that is what people are going to remember when they see Barack Obama out speaking, out talking, out putting it out there. This is what people are going to remember. And uh, we didn't play Gorka yet. There's a 30-second clip on Gorka. Sebastian. This speech yesterday was so unseemly. The tradition, the protocol is former presidents, they go into the background, they build their presidential library, they do charitable work. This is, you don't get involved in politics. And you know what's really, really stunning? The, dr the Drudge Report had a posting yesterday. Obama referred to himself in this speech 102 times, Ed. <laughs> he hasn't Are you surprised? It's about, it's about me, 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 me. <laughs> it's, it, it is so good for the president. It's so good for the midterms. Hmm. Wow. I mean, you can't say no more than that. I mean, that's what it is. And then real quick on the flip side, this is what's kind of dangerous on the, on the, uh, the Democrat side. Right now, uh, the D Democrat Party is failing forward. Uh, Democrat Dems, let's see, oh, 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 uh, California Dems, Newsom, uh, Feinstein, both dropped single digit leads in the latest poll. So long time Diane Feinstein and, uh, I think it's Gavin Newsom, uh, out there in California. I mean, they're the establishment part of the party. They have dropped a single digit leads looking like one of them is against a Republican looking like they might be, if the polls are what the polls were for the presidency, they're going to lose. Diane Feinstein, I believe she's up against a social, or maybe Newsom. One of them's up against a socialist who has come out from nowhere. Uh, and again, Ocasio Cortez is backing a Democrat that defeated a 10 term congressman in the primary. So there's another socialist who just took out a 10 term congressman. Uh, polls are saying that Dianne Feinstein's Senate re-election chances are slipping away. Didn't you say that the that the turnout for some of these primaries was lower than normal? Yeah, people are just. You know what that tells me? That tells me that the Democrats that normally come out and support normal Democrats are put off. They're put off, right. and and what right. does that leave you with? See, they're trying to paint this false picture. That there's this groundswell of communist and uh, 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 democratic socialists that are backing these far left wing communist candidates. When in fact, when the moderates all disappear, either to go uh, decide to support the red wave or to just go back home and not even participate anymore. Right. What you're left with are the extreme fringes. And that's how you got your uh, your uh, Cortezes and all that kind of stuff. And that's where you get the new... Alejandria. The new voters for the Democrat Party. Anarchy! 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 I don't even know what that means, but I love it. <laughs> That, that's the Democrat Party. Those are the new voters. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's only going to get worse, old man. I, I got to give credit where credit's due. I was talking to my millennial to, uh, this past week about this. Some some crazed man intentionally rammed his truck into a local Fox News KDFW station okay. through the glass walls and glass windows screaming about treason. Oh, jeez. Ugh. And then we had our incident here in Cincinnati where uh, the, shooting. the shooter, apparently he went through all the different restaurants and then finally settled on the Fifth Third Bank to, to just start a random shooting. Uh, you want me to tell you what I think? He was looking for the largest crowd of people, I think. Maybe, but did you, I think he was waiting. 
I think he wanted the shooting to start at exactly 9-11. Oh. The shooting did, in fact, start at 9-10, but this guy's kind of crazy and stupid, and I think that he uh, he just had a, a wrong time on his clock or something like that. I think he was hanging out in the restaurants. I think he wanted to attack the Fifth Third Bank. Uh, it's not a bank. It's the Fifth Third Bank building. building. Yeah, it looks eerily similar in architecture to the World Trade Center. But yeah. uh, he did he did start the attack at about 9-10, which is an amazing coincidence that he was that close to 9-11. And uh, he just uh, – he had a pistol. He is – he was born in Puerto Rico, San Juan, which but, makes him a U.S. citizen. But, uh, by the way, I want to – local uh, WLWT5, mm-hmm. it was not an AR and it was not an AK. I know you obsessed – and you just you were just consumed with it for for nine straight they just hours. Made that up? Yeah, hey, yep. Yeah, just threw it out there. Uh, uh, they so. were obsessed with this. They they kept saying, "Get down to the hospital and give blood." Just again and again, over and and and, and then the other thing they said, you, you know, we pray we trained for years for for an active shooter, and now we've got one. They said that. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was gosh. it was nine straight hours of complete and utter. Nonsense. No. It was awful. Well, Anyways, it, it caused the death of three innocent people, and I guess the fourth one was himself. There he, were some that were very cl- critically wounded. One of them survived. I, I was. I watched a little bit of the video clip, and I think you have the clip, don't you? Or are you, are you going to play it or not going to play it? I can't play it. Yeah. Okay. So, so Brian has the the body uh, cam footage. Somebody got shot twelve times. Oh, that's okay. You just say I understand oh. and proceed. Somebody got shot twelve times. And survived. So God was looking over somebody that day. That's for sure. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually know somebody who's been shot a half dozen times and is still alive. Wow. Well, yeah. So that's there's amazing. the gunman. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh, oh wait. Hold, hold, hold on. on. You got to back it up. We're not even on point yet. Good yeah. Lord. Yeah, I Mr. What producer, doing here. what are we doing? All right. There we go. Okay. The first part doesn't have sound because it's closed caption TV. However, uh, as soon as you get to the body cam, it will give you sound, and I'll control the volume, I guess. Um, but you can see that here's a sheriff that's trying to uh, push this guy into safety, and then here comes the shooter. So he just barely got to safety just in time. And he's just walking and randomly uh, firing at whoever he sees. He's not really running or acting frantic. He's just looking for whoever to shoot. It's just, this guy's just a crazy nut job, and then all of a sudden he gets he starts to get shot by cops, and he goes running, and then he's dead. So and the the cops apparently shot. Now here's oh. the part with the sound. What do you say? This is right outside the building. What do you say? That glass that you see right there is the glass that we were just looking at from the inside a minute ago. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's about all the time we got for right now. But no, so anyway, so the cops shot through the glass window. They did an incredible job. They were on the duty. My brother works at the the building right next to it. And he said that there are police officers everywhere all day long. Right. For this guy to go down there, it, it was a suicide mission. Absolutely. Yeah, and, they, and they, uh, a lot of the people that uh, know more about him say that he has a history of mental health issues, which obviously is not very surprising. Right. And if you're watching CNN or MSNBC, it'll be enough to get you really upset. I'm not saying that's what he was doing, but you know the shooter that went to kill all the Republican senators. Mm -hmm. That's what he was doing. He was obsessed with the CNNs and the MSNBCs of the world. Right. Anyway, so folks, share the show with your friends and your family. Tell everybody about Smith Radio, Military Veteran Talk Radio. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Smith Radio and at Brian P. Smith. Uh, we're usually trying to scope throughout the week, catch us real quick scopes. It's a lot of fun having a lot of uh, interaction with everybody. And uh, thank you. Welcome to the new folks that are on the show. And again, if you jump over to patreon.com slash Smith Radio or just go to the website, smithradio.com, become a Patreon. The first one today or the first one after this show that becomes a Patreon will receive the DVD of Dinesh D'Souza's last movie, America, Imagine a World Without Her. Yeah, it pays for itself. And the next two after that we'll get, I know it's a 2018, but we'll sign it and you'll get a 2018 Smith Radio calendar. I got two of those left and we will be coming out with a 2019 here pretty soon. All right. Make sure you guys are supporting New Right Radio with us and, uh, you know, it's you got to just 
you got to support us financially. Support everybody who's putting out real news, and that starts with us and make it happen. And we have to combat the uh, the left wing. And we are going to use every single – we've been doing it. Every single dollar that we earn through our Patreon uh, patrons is being reinvested into the program, and it's going to uh, uh, better our quality of programming and – We'll be able to do this more yes. even on location when we go out and visit you right. guys throughout the country. We'll be able to reach more people. All right. See you guys later. All right. Peace out. With unfathomable power. What kind of power? Unfathomable. It's unf- without fathom.